What's up, everybody? Welcome to PSI Love You XOXO Volume 2, Episode 1. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside, still no nickname because it's only your second show. Yeah, not yet. Blessing, Eddie Oye What's Jr. Up? How's it going? Uh, not much. How's it going for you? Man, you know, just living in the world of PlayStation. Yeah, you made yeah. this happen. How's that feel? It feels weird, but... If it wasn't for you getting hired and saying you wanted to make PSI Love You XOXO, we wouldn't have brought it back. Oh, man. There you go. That's oh, on man. you. This is hey. on you. So You're welcome, again, <laughs> all the hate mail you want to send, blessings Just right way. this way at Blessing Junior on Twitter. DMs are open. <laughs> are they? Yeah, they are. Oh, let's see how long that lasts. Oh yeah, Jeez Louise, man. So how you far, doing, Blessing? I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. How's the first full day of kind of funny been? It's been fun. Yeah. Uh, I've only, I mean, I've only been on KFGD. Yeah. And aside from that, I've just been doing like insurance stuff with Nick and. Walking around, finding out where I can get lunch. It's depressing that, kind of that he is the he's like the real HR person. Oh right? yeah, because yeah. he like comes to me, uh, comes to my desk and has like serious conversations, and I'm just like, man, I'm used to you know hearing you talk about the most obscene yeah. <laughs> things on yeah, the yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah totally, so totally. It's nice to see you actually like being responsible in it, in, in this side of your element, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> actually, being an adult at some point on the show, yeah, 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 or I guess company, whatever. Everything's a show to me. So blessing. Here's the thing. Yes, we're talking as if everyone knows exactly what's happening. Mm. Many people do not understand yeah. what's happening. Some people just got, got an update. Some people had yeah. a dormant podcast feed, and all of a sudden, a new episode of PSI Love You XO popped up, and people were freaking out. So let's start from the top. My name's Greg Miller, and I work at a company called Kind of Funny. Uh, geez, what? 13 years ago? Next month, right? Yeah, I moved from the middle of Missouri to San Francisco to cover PlayStation for IGN.com and did that for eight years before we sprung off and started Kind of Funny on our own. Um, I was lucky enough to be one of the founders of Podcast Beyond. Uh, since that was my beat PlayStation, I've never shaken it and I'm still obsessed with trophies and still mm. obsessed with ecosystems, still uh, obsessed with yelling at Shuhei Yoshida. Mm -hmm. And so... I'm happy to have another outlet for that, another PlayStation podcast to come in and get really, really nerdy. And I think both celebrate and criticize uh, the brand and the company and the decisions yeah. and everything else that have come before it. To live in it. Yeah. And I would think most people know that in some regard about me. But Blessing, what's your story? So it was probably 2013-ish I started listening to Beyond. I talked a little bit about this on We Have Cool Friends. But nobody watched that episode though. So do oh it again. yeah, <laughs> um, I yeah I started listening to this pod or to Beyond yeah. in like 2013 ish around the time of like Last of Us and Bioshock Infinite <sighs> and Good GTA Five like times. a lot of big releases right which would make sense because you know those are what kind of brought me into hey I'm gonna I want to check out like reviews but not just reviews I want to check out like conversations people are having sure. I remember like I used to go on IGN all the time just to watch um, reviews. And I would see, like, Game Scoop, and I'd be like, oh, shoot, that's, like, an hour-long thing. I don't have time for that, but yeah, that yeah. looks cool. And then, yeah, I think it was either, it was probably Last of Us that made me go, oh, snap, they're doing, like, a spoiler conversation. I'm yeah. going to listen to that because that seems cool. And I think that was on Beyond. Yeah, that was, that was, uh, we had uh, 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 Neil and Bruce in for that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so I listened to that, um, and I got hooked. You know, I started listening to Beyond every week, started getting into Game Scoop, started getting, started getting into podcasts from there. Yeah. Um, and after a while of listening, I was like, shoot, this is awesome. I would love to one day work at IGN and be, be on Beyond or like, you know, if not Beyond, like I want to at least at the very least get into the video games industry on the media side. Yeah. Um, and so uh, a few years passed and th that was while I was in college. So I was going to school for communication with a focus in uh, media. Um, and so a few years passed, I graduated college, moved to Seattle, start working in Seattle. And um, I think it was 20... 15 you guys launched kind of funny yep yes you guys launched kind of funny in 2015 uh the same year i graduated and i remember being like huh like these guys launched a company uh just to talk about video games <laughs> and talk about like media and all this all this different stuff um and i fell in love with that i fell in love with the idea and uh that's kind of what led to me launching a website called okbeast.com which is a website about video games and nerd culture um and that started the okbeast podcast uh made friends with uh alex van aiken and ian prichel and brandon wilson who troublemakers I met. all of them. oh yeah all of them uh, just horrible people <laughs> um but i met all of them through the kind of funny community yeah right uh, i met alex van aiken in the facebook group and like he invited me onto his podcast and through that relationship uh we got into uh, we we kind of partnered together in 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 
uh, kind of built OK Beast into what it became. Um, and, you know, OK Beast for me kind of started off with the idea that, hey, like it still started off at the, with the heart of it being, I want to get hired somewhere. I want to get hired, uh, whether it is on, onto IGN and being sure. on Beyond or GameScoop or whatever, or, you know, kind of funny, right? Or GameSpot or Giant Bomb or whatever it may be. But uh, you I wanted want, your foot in the door. I understand. I wanted my foot in, my foot in the door um, with Beyond kind of being like the, the inspiration uh, that kind of sparked it. Yeah. Um, and so did that, <clears throat> a couple, did that over a few years and, it kind of led me here you yeah. know kind of funny up and comers came here for that yeah. um you know made friends with a lot of people in the community which i which somehow led led to me becoming prom king all this stuff but um <laughs> yeah that stuff led to me coming here as an up and comer and for the person who hired. just googled playstation podcast and found this and is like prom king yeah, <laughs> How are yeah. They talking like, what's about? happening kind of funny is a different beast oh yeah yeah, yeah, and I mean that's all. That's why I'm here. You know, yeah. I mentioned on we have cool friends that I would love to uh, do. P.S. I love you, XO and XO, XO. Yeah. Um, and here we are. Yeah, I you know I, that was music to Tim's ears because I think Tim knew it more than I did. I think that I missed this. You know what I mean? Again, I I consider obviously I exist in the PlayStation ecosystem. I love doing games daily. I love going in there and talking about everything. But you see it, I think, as a listener or mm-hmm. a viewer, right? That we get to that part of what's going on in the. Uh, uh, the deep end of PC gaming, or yeah. I'll say something about Xbox that I'm not 100 yeah, sure yeah. about, right? Whereas like you like, ask questions about the Epic Game Store because right. you don't know how. It you runs. know, like I can still give you opinions and give you feedback and talk to the people that I know and bring in people like Imran and Fran who have different voices on it. But obviously, I still exist in PlayStation, and I have missed mm-hmm. having a beat like that. So I have to thank you for willing this into existence because mm-hmm. yeah, Tim see- saw it before I did that I wanted this without knowing it, yeah. and it wasn't I think until building the dock today where I was like fuck we got a really good show <laughs> like this is a really really good thing we have going yeah dude and i haven't i don't think i've said this on content yet but thank you for hiring me you know thank oh. you for br- br- bringing me out here uh and allowing me to do this because this is like i said like this is kind of what uh i've wanted for a long time yeah you um, know yeah for i talked about it on the stream and obviously i know not ever had time to watch all 12 hours of the stream but for us with kind of funny uh day 2020 right and bringing you on and announcing the new studio and announcing the return to ps i love you I was talking to Tim last night in text where he was reading through what I had made for the show. And he's like, oh, my gosh, this is really cool. And I'm like, thank you very much. Like, I really feel like we're about to start, like, our next great age. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I really do feel that this is the – I was so excited to come to work today to work with you, obviously. But because of the fact that I feel like this is kicking off the next decade of what this company is and yeah. what we want to do and, like, literally what we want to do of you – found podcasting about video games through podcast beyond you yes. know what i mean and you became part of the community and you were always a standout in the community and everybody loves you and like you took it you had the initiative to go run and make your own stuff and make your own shows and like mm. that's what this is fucking all about right it is yeah. about inspiring it is about bringing up the next generation it is about making sure that like there's con like the, you think about i mean i don't even have time to think about it and i i definitely didn't when i started 13 years ago but like mm. there are people who are going to listen to you in the next months and years of this and get inspired to go make their own podcasts and their own shows. And then when I'm long dead of a chicken wing overdose, you'll be hosting the shows. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, man. That's bizarre. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah. But right now we can't fuck up this show. Because oh, yeah. this is PSI Love You XOXO Volume 2, Episode 1. Today we're talking about the never-ending search for more PlayStation 5 info, the best PlayStation games of the decade, and where the hell is Patapon 2 on PlayStation 4. Remember, patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames keeps the lights on and the mics on. That's how you can support this show. Head over there. You can get every episode of PSI Love You XOXO ad-free, along with an exclusive post show we do only over there. Uh, it's up as video. It's up as, uh, you know, uh, MP3s. You can get it there. You can get it on your podcast feeds. You can do all that stuff. Plus, if you go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames, that's where you can submit your questions. Uh, be part of the show, of course. I asked you a whole bunch of extra stuff on the forum this week. So many of you filled it out. Thank you. And when I say so many of you filled, filled it out, legitimately. Really? We, uh, we're kind of funny. So we screwed up the form submission mm-hmm. where we published the link and nobody noticed that I hadn't set the privacy to somebody. You, you could do it if you didn't work for kind of funny. Mm-hmm. And so we published it. You guys on Patreon let us know. Last night, But I did it for four hours and we had more than 150 responses. Oh, wow. And we've destroyed that number, obviously, as of this morning. Holy cow. Do you want to talk about excitement for this show to be back? Thank you for all your kind words, your posts, your tweets, everything else about this we're excited to make this with you i remember of course uh it is the same ps i love you xoxo feed from the old days you can subscribe to that on itunes google play all that jazz over on youtube.com slash kind of funny games or roosterteeth.com you can get it or wherever you get your podcasts uh we have a whole bunch of different patreon producers but as a reminder because it's always confusing remember we do it on a month by month basis for patreon meaning that right now there's a fundraising campaign on patreon.com slash kind of funny games it 
is, of course, what Higher Blessing got this show back, uh, got us a new studio, all this other stuff. But we're also trying to do a basketball game where we'll all get hurt. And then also go to Pittsburgh to podcast with Able Gamers Steve. Uh, if you go over there and kick us a few bucks because maybe you like the show or you want it early and ad-free, that would be great. The money goes there. There's a Patreon producer tier where we read your name on it. Remember, if you donate during the month of January, we start reading those names in February. So right now, this show didn't exist in December, so there's nobody for this. But I assure you, there's a lot. So start packing a lunch next time around. Blessing? Yes. The way we're going to begin each and every PS I Love You XOXO is with a simple one. What you playing? Man, I've been playing two very high-profile PlayStation games. Oh, and I'm sure they're all brand spanking new. Oh, yeah. No, they are. They are. Um, no, Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> uh, here's the thing. Yeah, you better. You, you, that's the thing. You <laughs> better start digging yourself yeah. out now that you're hosting a PlayStation show. You haven't finished I, I got it. a lot to explain. Herman Hulse. On this episode. Charge the whole freaking company now. Worldwide Studios over there. So... And this is a shame because of what show this is. But in 2017, uh, I got what some may may call, what I call, uh, Breath of the Wild Syndrome. Mm-hmm. Where, mm-hmm. Uh, if you remember, I Why think it was February, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn launched. Mm-hmm. And it was great. People loved it. People were like, oh, man, this game's amazing. And then, then like a week later. Th- yeah, a week later, the Switch launched with yeah. Breath of the Wild. And the week that Horizon Zero Dawn launched, I played it. I got into it. I played probably about, I'd say, 10 hours um and was enjoying it fine i wasn't falling in love with it but i was like okay this game seems cool i I like the open world i like the characters like what's going on here and then i played uh breath of the wild when that released and it kind of blew me away uh because uh i'm not i'm not necessarily always been a zelda fan uh i think i my first zelda i probably played in like 2011 2012 and it was like twilight princess um And so, like, before Breath of the Wild, Twilight Princess was, like, my favorite Zelda. And Lord then, Almighty. Yeah. God. Um, you know there uh, was yeah. other Zeldas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, And since I've, I've, like, played Ocarina since then. And, Hell yeah, yeah, and okay. I, I mean, I've always played, like, the original Legend like, sure. of Zelda, never beat it. But um, to bring this back to PlayStation, right, I played Breath of the Wild, beat it, was blown away, and I tried to go, to Her- I tried to go back to Horizon immediately mm. after, and I had so much difficulty sure. because... Uh, Breath of the Wild was like a different type of open world game. They did like a lot of cool new things. They had the climbing, they had yeah. the physics, had yeah. all that stuff. And going back to Horizon Zero Dawn, Horizon Zero Dawn is definitely like just had stunning graphics, amazing quests, cool enemies. I understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. you, you know, yeah. all that great stuff. But also like it all, it was also this kind of mixture between like Far Cry and like The Witcher um, in a weird way. It was an RPG. It was an RPG. Right? Yeah, that was the. That was the. Un- I mean, that's the uh, the meat of what that was, which was so different for Gorilla. Yeah, um, and I think it, like Horizon, I think is unique as an open world game because mm-hmm. it is such like it, it is very good at being an RPG, but it's also very good at being like a Far Cry like action like let's let's explore, let's take down enemies, all totally. this stuff. But, Nothing you were doing is wasting your time. Exactly. Everything was building up your character. Yeah, but at the same time, I found difficulty getting back into it. Um, sort of sort of the thing of like okay I, it's been a while since i got since i played this game what are the controls oh yeah what's the going worst. on in the story that was me with frozen wilds okay i had been so hyped for frozen wilds after mm-hmm. loving obviously the initial launch and when frozen wilds dropped and i jumped in frozen wilds is built for pros and cons right to be uh hey this is more quests mm-hmm. so when i jumped back in i was like wait how the fuck do i do anything i got yeah. immediately run over i was like oh god okay. yeah and so i tried it i couldn't get into it i um and I had compl- I, I even had complaints at the time. Like I didn't love the combat. Yeah. I thought it could be janky at times. I uh, I don't necessarily love open worlds where everything wants to kill you. Sure. And you know wh- whichever way you go in Horizon Zero Dawn in the world, like there are machines that are trying to just destroy you yeah. at every at, at every turn. And so that was kind of frustrating for me. Um, and yeah, I, I just I put it away for a while. And uh, a few weeks ago, I decided, hey. If I'm gonna be on PS I Love You XOXO, I need to have like a good knowledge of PlayStation exclusives, especially like PS4 exclusives. Um, and so I started back Horizon. I uh, I started a new game. Smart. And I played that first opening the f- opening act where you were playing as small uh, Aloy. At, yeah, as Aloy as a child. I loved that. Yeah, which God. is great. It was awesome. That was I remember like having not you know you see th- things out of order for games and trailers and whatever. And I remember when mm-hmm. they, that was one of the first preview events where it was just like here's a controller, sit down and play. And I remember playing that and being like, what the yeah. fuck? This is so cool. Yeah. Collecting all the the echoes for lack yeah. of a better term. <laughs> and like I forgot I actually forgot how much I I really enjoyed the story early on. Um and so I did that and I got back into the open world and I was like, okay. And the, like this is like right after the prologue, right? And so it puts you into the open world and I'm like, all right, ten hours until I get back to where I was. 
and I started playing, and I was like, you know what, man? I feel like I got, I feel like I understand the controls from the tutorial. Oh. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go on YouTube, and I'm going to look up, like, the whole, like, splice together movie sure. cutscene thing of Horizon. The cliff notes of Horizon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was probably, like, two hours until I reached back until where I was. Yeah. But those... Those two hours of rewatching Horizon cutscenes was riveting. Oh yeah, that's a great story, <laughs> dude. That is something I can't even now. It, I, I always find this fascinating when you talk about a game that's come and gone, and it, we we have years in between. And I haven't had a real discussion for mm -hmm. what st stands out to me is a distinct memory with Horizon of getting. I was doing. I'm trying to max out every tree. I'm trying to get every X XP point. I'm running around doing all stuff, and I remember finally getting back on to the main quest, mm -hmm. doing it, and then being like, "Oh, I gotta see the next one." Yeah. Oh, I gotta see it. And then suddenly I was like, wow, I'm I haven't had an RPG pull me through the main quest where I yeah. wasn't just like, I can get back to this. I'll remember whatever I'm trying to do. I was like, this is fascinating. I need to know yeah. what happened to this civilization. They do such a great job of creating that world and uh like explaining like the different traditions that are going on and kind of giving hints to like you know what's going on here and like the idea of uh these new or old new machines, because it's yeah. like a future post apocalypse. Um all that stuff was hitting hard with me, and so I, 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 I finished the, the cutscenes up to where I stopped originally. It was like, okay, cool, I'm caught up now. Started playing it. Been playing for about ten more hours nice. at this point. Uh, really enjoying it. I, I still have qualms with combat against humans. Okay. I love the machine combat. I think that that's where the game shines the most is when you're fighting these machines because there's a lot of different types of machines. There's the watchers there's the i think grazers there's like the long legs and yep. like the more and more you explore the open world the different types of machines you discover yeah uh, which is really cool uh fighting those is awesome you know you have like a good arsenal of weapons um, so many different tactics too. so yeah so many different so ways many of like getting them to chase me and then dropping the stakes in the ground to put up a tripwire yeah. and electrocute them yeah. yeah and i just discovered the um I forget what it's called. It's like it's almost like a machine gun. It's like, like mm, you know what mm, I'm talking mm, about. Mm, mm. I forget what it's called, but uh, that thing's awesome. I like the different like elemental, yeah, ammo you can equip. All that stuff I think lends itself to variety in the combat. Sure, um, yeah, you don't feel like you're doing you're doing similar things, but the same thing. Yeah, over yeah, over which again, is right? where like I think when I originally played it, I was mainly the rattler. Is that the, the rattler? Yeah, yes, yeah. the rattler is awesome. When I originally played it, I was sticking a lot to the bow and arrow, and I wasn't really utilizing my arsenal, which I think was. Um, was kind of bringing it down for me, but now that I'm like, I have like a full like wheel, weapon wheel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm able to like be like, okay, I'm gonna switch to grenades, I'm gonna lob these at this giant machine. Okay, now I'm gonna switch back to my fire arrows. I'm gonna spam those a bit. Uh, now I'm going to go back to the um, I forget what it's called, but like the thing you're talking about, like the rope thing that yeah, yeah. Uh, the the trip machines wires, will yeah. the trip wires. Yes, I'm gonna equip the trip wires. That's gonna stun them for a bit. I'm gonna uh, switch to I'm gonna use the D-pad uh, equip my. Um, uh, there's like a staff thing she puts in the ground that's like oh yeah, yeah you know yeah, what I'm yeah, talking like about puts out the, the radius right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah I'm gonna do that like all that stuff happening in real time is really fun really good and really impressive yeah it keeps um, you on your toes man keeps you on your toes so I've been enjoying that I've been enjoying the story keeps on getting better and better yeah. as I play it I think the, the reveals have, do really you cool. know the ending do you has that been no I don't like, know the ending okay. um, but like from where I'm at I I know there were like a lot of spoilers when this game originally came out, or like a lot of things that could be spoiled, uh, because I remember hearing conversations of people, people, people being like, "Man, just you know, the setting alone itself could be like a spoiler." You know, all yeah. these different things could be a spoiler, and so like I've gone far enough where, to where I'm like, I'm not fearful. Like I'm sure there's twists and stuff, but like I've gone far enough where I'm like, okay, I have like an idea of what this story is. Yeah. Um, and are I feel you, like you're gonna see it through. Yeah, I'm gonna see it through. Yeah. 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 Uh, if I can get it to work, because I'm having PS4 <laughs> issues right What's now. What's wrong with PS4? Um, uh, so. And this might not be a PS4 issue. Okay, it might be a Horizon go. issue. Oh, well, I don't accept that either. Yeah. So I, I've gotten to a new part <laughs> of the open world. And this was just yesterday where I I was trying to traverse to the next waypoint. And halfway through, my game uh, essentially crashes. But the prompt it gives me is that my external hard drive has been unplugged. Oh, okay. And so I was like, oh, shoot, my external hard drive is broken. I tried, I tried it up again. Um, just to see if it was like a one-time thing it happened again in the same spot which i thought was curious huh. um and so i was like okay that's weird uh, i turned off my ps4 turned it back on tried doing it again happened again in the same exact spot in horizon like so you're starting at the game from a spot you're actually yeah. playing again but I'm as soon as you get to this one location yeah to this one location so i like i i uh respawn from like my last save point um run up to where i was going and then yeah at the same spot in the open world is where the game 
just locks locks uh and it it says it's an external hard drive thing after that i played a lot of death stranding and i didn't have an issue with death no stranding. problem there yeah okay. yeah um and are so are you running base or pro base gotcha. yeah base ps4 on my external hard drive and so what i'm doing or what i what i did was i uninstalled it from my external hard drive i i now installed it into my base ps4 and so hopefully that doesn't that issue doesn't arise again um but i thought that was a peculiar thing that was weird that's yeah, weird one. um but it's probably just like a weird fluke. It's probably my external hard drive in the way it's interacting with the PS4. It's something weird. Um, but I do plan to see it through. I do okay. plan to, to, to finish it because I, I'm really enjoying the story. And I've the more I play it, the more and more I, I, I like it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. Uh, aside from that, I've been playing Death Stranding. Nice. I'm in Chapter 5 now. I've been playing that okay. game very slowly, which I feel like... Are you enjoying it? Oh, I'm enjoying okay, it a perfect, lot. Okay, perfect. That's what yeah, I'm Yeah, I freaking love Death Stranding. Okay. Um, I'm, I mean, I've, I've always been a fan of Metal Gear Solid. Um, and the thing I, the realization that I had when I first started playing Death Stranding, when I got to like chapter probably two or three, yeah. is that I, I don't necessarily think Death Stranding is a game for Kojima fans. Mm. Like I, as somebody who played all the Metal Gear Solids and Metal Gear Solid is probably my favorite video game franchise. Oh yeah. Get yeah. Up. That's what I said. Thank you, Kevin. Um, I've not played Peace Walker though. God, I should, fuck I, damn it. <laughs> I should give that caveat. You're right, Kevin. I got, right. I got a PSP uh, big oh, boss yeah. pack right up there. You want to break into something that's probably worth more than all of us combined. Yeah, the battery is definitely popping then. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've played Metal Gear Solid 1 through, the, 1 through 4, and I love Metal Gear Solid. But playing Death Stranding, upon starting it, I think people were equating the weirdness of Death Stranding to the weirdness of Kojima games. Yeah. And I don't agree. I think Death Stranding is a completely different type of weird. I played Metal Gear Solid 3 uh, in November, like the first hour. Oh, the first time? No, 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 no. Okay. No, Metal Gear Solid 3 is like one of my favorite games. Sure. Um, I, I was playing it to show other people, um, sh to show the OKB screw, actually. I think it was Alex specifically. I don't think he played Metal Gear Solid 3. And so I, I played the first, um, the Virtuous Mission into like the first hour of like when you return uh, to the jungle. And while playing that, I was like, this is all pretty straightforward. Like, it's very anime, and yeah. it's very like, it can get kind of weird, and the dialogue the is The characters, very the way they interact with each yeah, other. Yeah, but this. This is all understandable and clear, and like Kojima doesn't come off as a madman <laughs> in his storytelling here. Um, and like I think Metal Gear Solid One is similar. Like sure. it's not like like it's it's not convoluted in the way. The that weirdest thing about Metal Gear Solid Metal Gear Solid on yeah. PlayStation One, right, would be the idea that it drops you and it doesn't hold your hand story wise yeah. when most games totally did, or gave you like right like you're dropped in and like I remember playing it for the first time with Poe, and we were like. What are they talking? Like it was mm -hmm. like, all right, cool. You, I got out and like, cause we didn't watch the video. There's all the videos right of when they abduct Snake and bring him out of Alaska and bring him back down and explain the mission to him. But we didn't watch any of that. Yeah, we just hit start thinking that was the game and jumped mm -hmm. into the game. You're like, wait, why are they talking about his haircut and all this different stuff? Yeah, and, and like there's that, and then there's like the fourth fourth wall breaking things, and so mm -hmm. like Psycho Mantis mm -hmm. and the whole like look at the back of your disc to yeah, get the yeah. code for the codec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that like that was the way in which that game was weird. But like the narr the narrative, the story, all that stuff. Easily understandable. Uh, two gets pretty weird, but like at the same time, I think that one you you can. The I, Yeah, like that one goes places, but at the same time, like I don't think any of these games are weird in the way that Death Stranding is weird. Sure. Like Death Stranding, I feel like is in a different bucket of like like somebody asked me when Death Stranding first came out, like is this this is this a game for uh, Kojima fans? Or I forget if somebody asked me that or if that conversation came up. And my answer is like I don't think it's a game for Kojima fans. I think it's a game for if you think you'd be interested in Death Stranding specifically. Sure. And so like me playing it, like so far I don't like Death Stranding as much as I like any of the Metal Gear Solids, but I still really enjoy it for what it is. Like yeah. it's very for me very relaxing. Yep. You know, yeah. very Dude. enjoyable, especially if you play it laid back. Um, that's why I'm playing it so slowly right now is yeah. because like this is a game I have no desire of rushing through like i feel like if i played this game at any of a quicker pace than i am i probably wouldn't like it as much but for me like last night you know i booted it up just because well one because i was having the rising with work the rising. anymore yeah, yeah. yeah so i was like oh, i'll just play some death stranding and i i did like three of the main deliveries um i did one like very long delivery or no these were two long ish deliveries um in chapter five <clears throat> and i got to like a certain part like probably like a bigger um not reveal but like a story moment in the game um and like did that, finished it, and they presented the next mission, and I was like, don't got time for that, and you know, <laughs> put it away because I know like that like within the next few days or within the next week, I'll be in the mood for it, jump yeah. back in, uh, enjoy it. Story is pretty uh, nonsensical, but I don't like I don't dislike it. I like how 
on the um I, on the nose i guess it is as far as like the meta it wears this metaphor is die on hard man. yeah like it's die hard, hard man to die yeah <laughs> or, or like yeah. i'm fragile but i'm not that, that fragile. fragile yeah i'm fragile fragile, I'm not fragile. yeah <laughs> um all that stuff I enjoy, I understand why people would be like, this is stupid. 100%. And I I even think a lot of it is stupid, but I don't think it's bad stupid. I think it's enjoyable stupid. Um, it was honestly, yeah. like, it's it's such an enjoyable ride. I love Death Stranding. Mm. And it was, like, for real, the dead man stuff, I think, that really, like, grounded it for me enough that I was like, I get where I'm at in this weird world. Yeah. The way he's interacting, the way he's acting, the way he's talking, I, I get how we're going with yeah. Norman Reedus and the fetus here and what we're doing and how we're having these conversations. Yeah. Yeah, and that game is so visually cool. Oh I God. love how that game looks. Dude, like, that's the thing is you nail it, and especially from the other side of the coin where you're like, I'd hate to rush it. Like, mm-hmm. I hated rushing that game. Yeah. For review, we got it, and we had, I think, three weeks, which sounds like a lot of time, but with yeah. the real life, and, like, it, it dropped kind of out of the blue. I was like, oh, crap, okay. Like, I was behind the eight ball from the start to the point that I brought my PlayStation and the review code to the Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order review event or a preview event mm-hmm. down in LA and I was playing my hotel room in between playing Jedi. And it was like such a gun to the head. I have to see this through. I have to beat yeah. this game that I hated it. That uh, would I hated, frustrate me. I hated the idea of, Oh my God, that side quest sounds cool. So I'd be walking and I'd be like the thing that was clearly going to go to Jeff Keighley. And I was like, ah, mm. I want to go meet Luden's fan, but I can't. That's not the main, I gotta go. Yeah. I gotta go. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. I robbed myself. I think of part and of it. And even for me, I think the thing that, that, um, I've kind of, I've kind of come down on is, uh, the mission I did yesterday, well, like, I did three missions yesterday. By the third one, I delivered the package. I um, They talked about the next mission, and I looked at the next mission, and I would essentially have to, like, walk, essentially, like, all the <laughs> yeah, way yeah, back yeah, 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 yeah. across the country, and I was just like, okay, I'm going to put this down. I'm, ba- I'm going to come back to it. Yeah. You know, And it's not like a thing where I was like, oh, I'm going to have to do this. It's more like, oh, no, I get to take a break because I just did a bunch of stuff, and when I'm ready to do that, I'm going to come back and do it, and I'm going to enjoy, enjoy If I had to do all that stuff, like – condensed into a few weeks i'd probably hate my experience with death stranding yeah um but and I, that was yeah. the thing is i was surprised it didn't turn on me because that's been the biggest argument about and i want i have it down in a segment later on talking about it but days gone his days gone was a similar thing of mm-hmm. here's your code and every reviewer i know who was trying to rush to beat that by the thing but days gone kept going um, and it was that yeah. thing of like fucking hell i need this game to end and i think there was mechanic problems and a whole bunch of different reasons why but i don't think it's just the timeline that led to the days gone reviews mm-hmm. versus the chasm of i think on the other side what players think of it but it was the idea with death stranding that i was at least i thought i was my point personally was proven of like yeah i felt the same way with death stranding but i love death stranding like death stranding mm-hmm. was like I, I feel like i'm doing this game and in injustice playing it this way but yeah. i'm gonna get through and do it that way nice what about you what have you been playing so for playstation stuff over break my holidays usually are i want to try to knock out things finish stuff i've been sitting on so for me it was meant to be platinums and finishing off stuff so I finally sat down and went through in uh, platinum Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Nice. I'd already beaten it. I already said, you know, coming out into the end of the year before break when we we're going to play a bunch of other stuff to make sure we were clear. It was my game of the year. It mm-hmm. remains my game of the year. Nice. Like, I loved it. Uh, I, you know, I think despite all the flaws that everyone else has talked about, and I don't even mean technical. I mean, like, the map being such a bitch of, like, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, where it is, like. Like the map that you pull up? People don't yeah. like that map? Yeah, no, no, no. It's a, I liked it. Really? Yeah, I, I thought it was awesome. I think it's fine with the exception it was of when you're trying to do stuff like this. Mm-hmm. Where it's oh, like, all okay. right, cool. Where I'm I'm looking at this giant map of this planet. And I'm like, all right, it's 98. It says 98% completed up here, which means there's one area I didn't. And trying uh, to scan through and go level to level. And then, all right, cool. It's all the way down there. How the fuck do I get? All right, go there. Go to that door. That door's locked for some reason. Like, oh, fucking Jesus. All right, come on, double back. Like, mm. Those little, like, look to the sky moments and sigh yeah. are so, so tiny. Like, mm-hmm. they aren't what I think of when I think of that game, let alone platinum in that game, of going through and having such a great time. I mm-hmm. thought its collectible system was built incredibly well for, you know, a trophy whore like myself. Of, like, okay, cool, I know what I'm missing. I know how to find that. I know how to get that information. Like, mm-hmm. you know, nothing was so punishing. It was a great trophy list of just, like, hey, go explore and do all this stuff. And how long do you think it took you? A long time. Really? Yeah, because it was a lot. What was it, the thing that probably took you the longest? It was the end there of going through and trying to do it. I for the first part, it, I for the most part, I should say, I wasn't trying to use guides for it. Where it was like I, I truly love this game top to bottom, mm-hmm. and so it would be like this area of Dothmere. You know, you don't have everything. Go in there, and it'd be like, all right, look around, like run through the same ch- tunnels, run through, look up there. How do I solve this puzzle? Da 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 da. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until the end where it was more like, fuck, I'm down to these last two chests, and I don't know where they want me to be. Or there's mm-hmm. a there's a secret, you know, I need to go collect to scan to unlock BD's memory, and I'm like. It says I've 100%ed this area. I don't know where this thing is. Mm-hmm. And it would be some 
jump to the wall, go all the way down when you're supposed to go up, and then go around a pillar, and then there it is. Like, damn. Yeah. Should have seen that. Didn't see it, though. Mm. So, I, I think the collectibles in that game are pretty cool. Yeah. I, I did. How did you like them being cosmetic only? So, I mean, I, I'm fine with that. Yeah, like, I, I, I like the ponchos. I wish... I, could, I wanted more non-poncho looks. Yeah, that's my thing too. Yeah, 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 I wish they they went with more variety. Yeah. Um, one of the things I thought was weird because like all like all of the the wearable stuff they are like ponchos, but like in certain cutscenes you would see like his arm clipped through totally. ponchos, and I'm totally. like, if all the if all the cosmetics are ponchos, why is this happening? That was my 100. percent And I'm like, I'm like, this has got to be one of those shitty. It looks great on PC. Like mm. there's some fabric texture that's like wrapping around everything. Yeah. Um, the one thing I will say about the the sabers, even though I think. In theory, I think the sabers are cool, like really awesome. I feel like I only really saw them like when you're like customizing yeah. your lightsaber. I feel like I only really only really noticed that on the screen where you are customizing it. Like yeah. when you're just in game, you can't really see your saber. Yeah. Um, which is the thing that was like a, a tad bit frustrating. But I think overall, like I I, I liked I liked the I liked the direction that they went with the with the cosmetics. I liked. I'm curious to see what the next Jedi uh, Star Wars Jedi game does with its cosmetics to see if it like goes further with it because I, I would like to see non ponchos. Um, do you think it'll be Cal again, or do you think they'll do a different Jedi? It'll be Cal. Yeah, yeah. I think the way that story kind of ends, I think that leaves more totally. room. Totally. For oh, I think there's plenty of room, but yeah. I just didn't because it's the same thing of he's gonna keep. Are we gonna keep you know customizing our lightsaber? <laughs> like how many oh, more yeah. things are you gonna get? What are you gonna do? Yeah. Is he gonna forget his force powers again? Like you know, it's That's good, little things yeah. like that. Then there's plenty of interesting ways around. Mm. But I just thought it would be interesting if they're gonna use that brand in the way I always wanted them to use Fear the Walking Dead. Where you, you ever hear my pitch for this? Where it's like Fear the Walking Dead is an all right idea at the start mm. of it's the start of this. How did this all happen? Right? Because you don't really see that in the Walking Dead normal st- series, and then. What then? But after season two, right? It's just like okay, cool. There's just more Walking Dead. There's another group of survivors. Mm-hmm. So I always wanted Fear the Walking Dead to be Fear the Walking Dead, Los Angeles, and then season two, Fear the Walking oh, Dead, Chicago, and saying. Berlin. And you think that you would like that for uh, Jedi? I love Cal, and I love BD, and I love uh, Seer. Right? So like, mm-hmm. no, I I am 100 percent down for more missions with them. I want to see you know the Night Sister uh, more fleshed out. Like I think yeah. there's so much to do yeah, with that cast. I, of characters. I love that cast of characters in Jedi. But that's always the struggle I fall into as someone who's dumb and not creative, mm-hmm. where I can totally wrap my head around and pitch you different stories for those characters. But then, what does the gameplay become, yeah. especially based on what we just did? Yeah. Where it's like, I, I mean, there's plenty of ways to do it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, you know. I mean, the type of game it is kind of lends itself to, like, um, at the beginning of the game, he forgets all his abilities, you know, just like other Metroidvania-like yeah, yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's stuff they could build on, though. Sure. And on, on top of the moves that he already has. Um, and I think, like, cosmetically, I think they're – if they – if they go a different way from ponchos, I think there there's ways they can go with that. And with like the the lightsaber thing is interesting because yeah, I don't know. Do you just add another set of colors? Yeah. Or like do you uh do like a whole bunch of new you know hilts lights, and hilts emitters and, all, and everything? Yeah, all yeah, of yeah. all those things. Yeah. Um, for those probably yeah, but for the colors, I don't know how they do that. Yeah. Um, maybe it's like maybe he gets a lightsaber like um Ray has in the Rise of Skywalker previews, where it's like the the oh um, the thing where it was, yeah, flips out and that stuff? thing yeah. that flips out when yeah, yeah. she's yeah. Um, maybe it's something like that where it's all new types of light- lightsabers. The thing I will say though is that for Star Wars, since everything is canon, with him ha- get with him getting a bunch of new lightsabers work, or would that get weird lore wise? Yeah. I don't. I'm not deep into Star Wars that way, so I don't know. I um, in a perfect world, I would love to see DLC for this game. Mm-hmm. You know, do something with Marin because I thought she was great and underused, and yes. then do since it's Star Wars Jedi colon, I could see it being Star Wars Jedi and it's Cal coming to a planet. We start off asking him super powered as mm. we left him, right? And it's him finding another Jedi or another Padawan That'd or whatever, cool. right? And then we switch over to that pad- Padawan and go. Maybe Cal gets captured, right? And then mm. we have to go through and do the whole thing again. That'd be cool. Something like that. But again, like you said, there's yeah. you know, there's plenty of ways to keep playing as Cal. Now, I don't know if this is reserved for like a segment or like some sort of well, like You can new invent idea. them. You're a host. You can do whatever you want. But if you, you, had, to, if you had to grade the Platinum... Ooh. For Jedi Fallen Order, yeah, Ooh. yeah. Ooh. Oh, and what am I grading on the IGN ten point scale, the Orioration twenty point scale? <laughs> I was gonna be like, like the a, B, school, C, D. like A B C D or A, B, I yeah. think it's an A for sure. Really? Okay. Yeah, I thought it was. A, I mean, it. It. I think it's one of those platinums that. I enjoy so much the core gameplay of that mm-hmm. I enjoy. I enjoy the exploration. I do for the mo- even though I'm bitched about the map to start. I do enjoy. Oh wait, there's that nook down there. I think. Oh no, I had been. Oh, what up there? You know, like 
that sense of discovery. It was just, you know, an additional probably, probably an additional 20 hours in where it was just like, mm -hmm. man, all right, cool. I, man, I wish there was a fast travel. Like, in the beginning, yeah. I'd been very adamant, like, no, I love that there's no fast travel. I love, like, mm -hmm. when I played through the story of, I'm with Cal, and I'm doing the journey, and I'm getting a little, but, like, 15 mm -hmm. hours in, I'm just like, oh, fuck, I got yeah. all the way when back When you're trying there. to just, like, sweep things up. Yeah, and even when it was like, all right, cool, I'm tapped. I'm sick of looking around this place, but I can't go back to my ship and go to another planet because it was such a bitch to get here. Like, I don't want to come back in three days and be like, wait, how did I get there? What did I do? Mm -hmm. But overall, I thought that, I mean, there was no, let me pull it up. There was no trophy on there that I can think of that I was like, you know what? That sucks. <laughs> Why sucks. did I do that? I hated that. Is it all, like, collectible stuff outside of the story trophies? Yeah, yeah, outside of it, there's, like, stuff like, you know, cut off a bog, you know, like big the big toad, tongue. the tongue yeah. thing, yeah, which did not work the way I thought it was. Cause, oh, you know, yeah, because you, like, it. force pull I was like, I'm going to freeze him. And I kept freezing. I'm like, what the fuck? I had to yeah. go watch PS4 Trophy. What up, Brian? I had to go watch his video or whatever. And sure enough, like, nope, you got to force pull it out of his mouth. Yeah. like, oh, well, that's a nifty thing. That's what I, I do appreciate when I talk about a good trophy list, right, is that it's making me play the game mm -hmm. just for a little bit in a way I normally wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So here's something you didn't think to do that you could have done. I'm like, oh, man, I played, whatever, 40, 50 hours of this game and never did it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I, they were mainly story stuff, like, you know, what I mean? Free, all, through there, like, cut off the tongue, find the stim canisters. Like, it was all stuff you'd do. I know a lot of people had trouble with green thumb. You like, see this one in there? It's, no. it's getting all the terrarium oh, planted. Oh, yeah. But the terrarium grew, like, in not real time, but, like, it took time in the game. So uh -huh. it was like you planted and it was over. You actually, so if you saved that for your last thing, mm -hmm. there are a lot of videos of people with their controller and a rubber band just having mm -hmm. cows spin in a circle outside the yeah. ship to make time go. That kind of crap. Sucks. I don't know if I love that one as a collectible. The, why the terrarium stuff? Why? Because like, when am I gonna go look at <laughs> go look at plants on my ship? When are you looking at your collectibles? I mean, like, I, have three, I have thirty ponchos. I, I looked at two of them before yeah, I was like, I'm never that, wearing. At a least poncho. that's like a thing where it's like, okay, I get to choose and like I can wear this through the game. I'm gonna at least see one of these with the terrarium stuff. I'm like, when am I ever gonna sit down and just stare at, stare at plants? It meant a lot to Grease. Do you not love Grease? I mean, Greasy Money Baby. Greasy cool. Money Baby. <laughs> yeah, he was the best. Yeah. Too much salt. Uh, the other thing I played over. Oh, sorry, Kev. I just want to say, like, I looked at my plants a lot. <laughs> you liked it? I, I looked at the plants a oh, lot. Oh, you looked at them a lot. I don't know why, why? but every <laughs> once in a while I'd go in. Well, to see their progress, because they were all growing, so I'd go in there and be like, How you guys doing, oh, little guy? Look at him. Look at him go. Oh, what are you doing over there? I guess there's guy? a market for it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, other thing, uh, in terms of a completionist uh, thing I played a lot of was Borderlands 3 again. Nice. Uh, obviously, love Borderlands 3. Uh, Moxie's heist dropped uh, right before break, and so ran through and played that, and it added a bunch of trophies, so I was trying to 100% that. And then once I even got all of those, uh, Jen, who's my my wife, if you didn't know, and then my co-op partner in Borderlands, mm -hmm. she had joined me for the end of it. And I was like, all right, cool. That's everything. She's like, well, I still have stuff to do. And so we've just been playing through all her stuff. And then we started going to the quest I was missing from non-DLC stuff. Mm -hmm. Just because that game so much fun. It's just so nice. much fun to run, shoot, and play. And especially with somebody who wants to do it with you, mm -hmm. right? And just sit there side by side on the couch. How much longer do you think you're going to play Borderlands forever? I think as long as they keep content coming, mm -hmm. right? Like, that's the big thing. Of course, full disclosure that I we I kind of funny make the Borderlands show with mm -hmm. them or whatever, but we can say whatever the fuck we want, so we do. Uh, as you saw me on Twitter with this fuck... Did you see this jump for this trophy? I've heard you talk about it. So, uh, the one of the trophies out there is to... Col in the Moxie's Heist DLC, right, is to go and collect... Uh, or go bomb all these statues that are in hidden places, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, they're not that hidden, but in, yeah, I was actually really enjoying it because you'd find them and see them and be like, oh, man... How do I get up there and how do I go do that thing, right? So it's, yeah, firebug, sabotage all the statues for Ember. Just a bronze. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, cool. And so it'd be a, a second for some of them of noodle scratching. Like, oh, that's what I go and do. And there was one dude right above a, a, a lava pit where it was clear that I'm supposed to run and jump off this thing and then grab the ledge. And it's right there. And I'm, dude, you know how you get, you get charged money when you die. Yeah. I, the, if, you, if you're short on money, by the way, and you have this, you have this DLC and you've been putting it off, Go do the DLC because it just rains cash on you. I'm playing a Mayhem huh. 3, but I mean, I had like 20 million, 15 million. I think I have like 30 million right now in the bank. Mm -hmm. At some point when I was doing this, I just bought more bank slots. So I was down to like 7 million when I started this thing. I died so much that I got from 7 million down to like 350,000. Huh. And that's a lot of deaths. And that's Jeez. a lot of cursing yeah. of like what. And granted, it's like percentage wise. So, you know, you're, I'm losing a lot in the top and then yeah. it gets better. But like, I'm going and I'm going. I'm hitting the wall. I'm hitting my head. I'm looking at videos. This one from Power Picks, right? Mm -hmm. And he's just whoop, 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 and he gets it. And I'm like, and he, there was a little bit of a turn, and I was like, I so I tweeted bitching about it, and other people were like, yeah, it took me forever. It only, and it only took me through. And then there was a ton of like, you fucking clown, just hit the jump bar. And a lot of people just hit the space button. I was like, mm -hmm. is this like 
some of this PC master race <laughs> bullshit uh-huh. that like I need to move the mouse and hit the thing and like and yeah. I was like fuck. And so I tweeted about it. Randy Pitchford eventually tweeted at me about it, like talking me through what was going on in terms of a game developer standpoint. I'm like, I don't know if that's what's happening, but yeah, when it was mm-hmm. the next day, I was after screaming at it. Jen came in and watched me do two of them, and finally she looks at it and like she obviously my wife is in video games and helps people uh, market and sell their games. She looks at it and just goes. I think Flax collision box might be too big. <laughs> She's like, login is my character. So on the second PS4, I turned it on, logged it in, invited Moe's to my, or Jen's Moe's to my game, picked up the controller, ran off the thing as Moe's, jumped, grabbed the side, pulled myself up. That's hilarious. And I was like, mother That's fucker, funny. that my flack is too tall for this jump. And it might have been like, uh-huh. I'm wearing the TV set yeah, head. Yeah, I was going to say, you know. is it the costume? Because like that's all one you fourth of players. All you can change is the head. So it's like, uh-huh. you f- assume that. And it was, I... A straw poll of looking at it and talking to a couple people. It seemed like if you were a flack, you were having problems with it. But if you weren't, you weren't. Huh. So I was like, motherfucker. Interesting. I wasted so much money and time on that. That's frustrating. All that said, I still adore that game. It had mm. such a great time. And it's been a great break playing it in Platinum. Or I guess 100%ing it and getting it back. I like that. In a game where the DLC is something I want to do. Mm-hmm. All of it. I'm looking at you, Spider-Man, where it was like, we're going to put a trophy in for New Game Plus. And I was like... See you later. I love you. Can't play you again. Yeah. And, I, and so now, the, I'm, now I'm haunted by that percentage I'm never going to get. Like, you know, I don't platinum many games. Oh, I will get to that. Don't uh, worry about that. <laughs> but Spider-Man was one that I platinum. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yes, 100%. I'm done with this. And yeah. then I, I go away and I come back and I'm like, wait, 40%? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, how did yeah. that happen? Yeah, as they keep adding stuff. Yeah. DC Universe Online, like, right, I have a platinum in 13% of the trophies or something ridiculous because they've added so much mm-hmm. DLC to Same for me in uh, Rocket League. Yeah. Ooh, I want to talk about that too. Mm. Uh, however, though, Brian Scola writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games, just like you can to be part of PSI Love You XOXO and says, With Greg being such a whore for trophies, how can we not have a segment revolving around his lame ass easy plats? It's kind of like po- poking fun at him while talking about trophies. You know what? Don't mind if I do, Brian. Over break, that was the other thing I did. I was mm-hmm. going to clean up a whole bunch. I, I, I know you know this to an extent, mm-hmm. but platinums are like potato chips. Once you have one, you got to keep going. Is that is that's it like exactly that? what it's because like? Because I got one and I've only gotten like uh, one a year. That's quitter talk. That's quitter talk right there. What I did, yeah, is I when I once I platinumed Star Wars, I was like right on to Control. I've been saving Control for a platinum too, mm. and I was like, where did I leave off? And I'm like, oh, I'm right outside. Of, I tweeted about it. The Mister Who Scolari's room or whatever mm-hmm. went and just got the shit kicked out of Same. me. I'm like, how the fuck do I play this game? Same exact thing happened to me where I was like, I, when I beat Control, I was like, this might be my platinum for the year because yeah. usually the way I, I go about it is I do one platinum a year and so like 2018 was like i think or not yeah 2018 was spider-man um and maybe undertale or the year before was undertale i forget how yeah yeah. but yeah usually i'll do one a year and control when i beat it i was like this is gonna be platinum for the year yeah and i went away from it because i think outer worlds came out some other game came out some other games came out it might have been ukulele and the impossible air (laughs) um a couple other games came out went to those played them um and it was december i was like time to go back to control uh booted it up played for a little bit and i was just like i I don't know. I was like, "What, what am to I do? doing?" Yeah. I, I remember being such a badass when this game ended, and now I don't remember shit. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Fuck!" So and then I, yeah, I put it down. I was like, "I'll come back to that." And then I have a folder on my PlayStation called Cheat Plats, and I finally dug into that. Hung over on New Year's Day while Jen had Netflix running, watching burlesque. Mm-hmm. I, I booted up a whole bunch. Of, yeah, burlesque share right. Stanley Tucci, a big fan of Stanley Tucci. You seen this one, Screencast Kid? Uh, no, but it came up in a conversation. We almost watched it, I think, the day after. Let me tell you, not a good movie, no. but like a garbage, like fun movie. Yeah. of like, this is whatever. While I, I platinumed One Night Stand again. This is the EU one. I already have oh. it on America. I already have it on the American oh, one. Oh, wow. Then I platinumed Foxyland on US PS4, EU PS4, and the PlayStation This is Vita. worrisome. Then I platinum Full Blast on North America PS4, EU PS4, Vita. Then I platinum Deep Space Rush on North American PS4, EU PS4, Vita. And then I started Explosion. And I'll tell you that right now. Fuck that game. That game no. is so bad that even I'm like, <laughs> you know what? Not even going to do this. I hate this. This sucks. Huh. That's how you go, man. Radalika so out there just you, publishing them. So you're playing these games three times. Yeah. For the how do you have the time? Well, I mean, when you're hungover and burlesque is on, what else are you going to do? You know what I mean? This is where I was talking to you, too, on Games Daily, where I one of I think it was uh, Foxyland. Yeah, that's the platformer. I mm. was trying to do remote play on the Vita with it, and it was just like late. There was just enough latency where I was like, oh, I got to stop this. Some of the le- last levels, I was like, I got to go play this on a PS4. I can't I can't deal with this. That's right worrisome. Now. What do you mean it's worrisome? It's fun. This it sounds like, like an out. addiction. <laughs> the one thing it I want like to toss out here, right? So One Night Stand, I, I do actually recommend as a game. Mm. If you remember, okay. One Night Stand was part of the, the second First kind of funny I think game showcase. First, one. first I kind of funny it. game showcase where they announced they were coming to a uh, console and PlayStation and Switch. Uh, basically, that is a visual novel 
choose your own adventure, obviously like most visual novels, about you wake up in bed naked next to a, a girl and, who's mm. naked as well. And like you've had a one night stand. How do you handle that situation? How do you do stuff? Yeah, I want to try that game. Platinum itself is easy if you care, but like I, that is 100% a game that I was excited. I actually, what had happened is I bought it on Switch and then I read, I think on Games Daily that day, mm. I read like, wait, PlayStation? Wait, what? And then I was like, oh, oh no, I bought it on Switch, right? And when it booted up, it had the Rattalika logo, mm. who are known for publishing just easy ass platinum mm. trophies. So then I started playing it there. And is it on those. Vita? No. No. Somebody said that. Somebody called me out on it uh, when they looked at it of like, oh man, playing one night stand on both PS4s, but not Vita. Mm. And like, cor- correct me if I'm wrong, obviously, patreon.com slash kind of funny games right in for the show. Uh, I looked even today on the native Vita store. Now, mm. granted, Vita store are pretty neglected these days. Yeah. <laughs> like, I couldn't find it there. Uh, Foxy Land was a weird platformer. Full Blast was a shoot 'em up, and Deep Space Rush was a almost endless runner, but like you're in control of the running thing going there. Mm. None of these games were garbage. Okay, you know what I mean. Like mm. I've definitely, I will tell you when I play the garbage, garbage games. Mm-hmm. No, I wouldn't say any of these games were great. Well, One Night Stand I think is cool and you should play. Period. Mm-hmm. The other ones they all got the job done though. You know what I mean. Now, speaking of maybe garbage games. Maybe good games. Bless, we come to our next segment of PS I Love You XOXO Volume 2. It's called 104 PSN Games, parentheses, ranked. Each week, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will go through the drop, look at what games are coming. We'll tell you about the other games that are coming, obviously, to the PlayStation, uh, that the ecosystem. Mm. But look through the PSN games, and then Bless and I will each pick one PSN game to play. Mm. Then we report back the next week, tell you what we thought of this. And they will then rank them throughout the year. So 52 weeks, 104 PSN games ranked, right? Similar to Ragu Bagu. There are rules, though, to this. We can't pick the same game. Okay. We can't pick something that's AAA. Mm-hmm. So we can't go, oh, The Last of Us 2 is my... No, none of that crap. You know what I mean? And it shouldn't be something we're going to play already. All right? So it's not like mm-hmm. After Party, I think, is a good example of... That's a cool yeah, d- yeah, yeah. digital game that's out. But if we are going to play that, this is more of a chance to spotlight either something interesting or something terrible. Mm-hmm. And I think we have some this week. So... Because of coming off the holiday season, obviously, the drop isn't on its normal schedule over on the PlayStation blog, by the way. Justin, Sid, what up? Uh, so we actually have to do real work and go to PlayStation 4. Kevin, can I see the PlayStation 4 for you? Thank you. So when you say we have to play these games. Yeah. I, now, I'm not saying roll credits. Okay. I'm not saying get nuts about it. I'm just saying all I need you to do is go through and get play it, it enough to talk it. about it. Okay. What's happening? What are you doing, Kevin? No, if you, oh. When, oh, you just do it in the program monitor like you did before. I saw it. Fine. Oh. Yeah, and whatever you did last time is fine. I like how he puts his head down there. Yeah. Now he turned well, it off. I'm to turn this on. Oh, okay. Well, I, I know, I know. It was crazy. I was confused. I, yeah, but does that make sense? You can put me in the lower monitor, right? Yeah. yeah, I think this is. At no point am I saying, hey, we're looking for you to beat the game yeah, yeah, yeah. and roll the credit. Like We all have lives. It was short enough, yeah. Yeah, of course. I'm, don't get me wrong. I'm still going to try to get the, pl- the garbage platinum games out of here. Mm-hmm. Kevin, throw it up for me, please. Oh, network unavailable. What happened to my connection? All right. Well, it's back, apparently, so it doesn't matter. We did it before we had it all set up, and of course, that would screw around to it. That's why I was just going to Ah, I don't care if people see what I'm up to. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is just the old PlayStation store. We know her well. No, did I go on the wrong session? Yeah, I hit explore. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. Hold on. We're getting there. So it's, what, it's, where, 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 I had it. There it is. New game. All right. There you go. Okay. So, obviously, it's a Monday as we record this. Yes. Tuesday afternoon, all the, the games are going to pop here, leaving us with these options. 4K, Brain Breaker, Game, and Best Seller's Theme. Jesus. Pa- Christmas, <gasps> Christmas bundle. Christmas bundle. Now, I'm telling you already, heads up, I'm calling this one. Is that even a game? You might think it's not, right? But as you see when you go into it here, right, you're like, all right, give me, yeah, give me the details. Let's see. It. We get to watch a little bit of a video here, right? No audio. No audio for it? Well, I mean, we have to oh, you don't need the audio for this, please, Kevin. You're going to be fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Hold on, the media is kicking up here. What's happening? Show me the video. Is this gonna be like one of them, like the, like the slide puzzle games? I think so. Because like, that's do, the thing, right? I do love slide puzzles. I don't. From what? Really? Yeah, dude. I used to get super into them, like the three by three slide puzzles. So here you go. Right. Look at look or at like this like thing as it goes. So Eric Games, great. Brain Breaker. Ma- easy. So then you go through. What game do you want to play? Right. Oh, so it's like a. And look at this. You have a little little creature. I think you're trying to keep alive yeah, as looks, stuff comes in off the sides of it. Right? It looks like a thermometer in the middle. And then you say, all right, cool. Where's the 4K Brain Breaker games in the best theme Christmas bundle, right? You're like, where where are the best sellers theme Christmas bundle? Look at the thing up there in the what? top left corner. <laughs> a little baby crawling across the, <laughs> crawling into the sky. What is that baby doing? 
Nobody knows, oh. but we're going to find out together, guys. When I play 4K <laughs> Brain Breaker game and bestsellers Christmas uh, theme Christmas bundle. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to do that one. They get harder. Are you ready? Is this part of the same trailer? This is all the same trailer. <laughs> They're doing their best to sell you on it, right? Somebody like, did this. So, oh, now see, now it looks like now it looks like the purple one. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Purple guy is blocking things. I can't tell what the purple guy's doing over there. Am I in control of the purple guy or the yeah, little guy? Yeah, you're in, the in control thing? of both of them. So you have to Impossible. not nobody's, get hit. Nobody's come up with a control mechanism Miller, like can that. Can I please explain? Sure. So you're trying to not get hit by the fireballs uh -huh. and at the same time keep this guy from falling over. Huh? What are the chances that this, this is done through motion controls? Oh my God! You can choose a theme. Now, this is the same trailer, by the way. Still going. This is still the same trailer. I want to see the Christmas theme. That's what? not a theme. That's a background image. Hey, best sellers theme Christmas bundle. All right. That's the thing. The title doesn't even make sense. Hmm. What's the platinum situation? You yeah, I don't know. See, this bundle includes five separate themes in one game. Was there any Christmas in that? <laughs> or was it? <laughs> was the baby Christmas? <laughs> I think the baby was Christmas. Okay. Here you go. See. Right, what do you got here? You got Brain Breaker, Horror Dark Jungle Dynamic theme. You got a Halloween theme. It's not even a Christmas theme. There's a Halloween theme, though. The Christmas bundle is the gift of the Brain oh, Breakers. Oh, yes. Okay. The understand. gift was under our tree all along. I understand now. So I'm going to call that one. It's a I want to see what yeah. 4K is all about here, all right? And I want some free themes, apparently, too. All right. What does that leave me with? Bless, you can either have Dawn of Man, which came out today on Monday, or mm -hmm. Graveyard Keeper Collector's Edition. Oh, man. You want to see a graveyard here? Yeah, let me see what graveyard is. Because this one is about running your own graveyard business in medieval times. These look like they can be decent games. Yo, yeah, well, this one's Tiny Build. Tiny oh, Build knows yeah. what they're doing. Yeah, Tiny Build is reputable. So see, here you go. It's like Graveyard Simulator, which also sounds pretty cool. Look at that. You got, look at Kevin, you think you got some waterfalls? You got some chickens over there? You think that's it, buddy? No, man. You got to go toss, toss bodies in the river. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. What do you think you're doing here? Says so this jumping skull. Build and manage your own medieval graveyard. Who wouldn't want to? Huh. See? Look at that. It's like, you know how uh, uh, Stardew Valley. It's like that, but with bodies. Because you're working. Mm. You're making a grave. I fixed the graveyard. You get 10 gold. Oh, God. Okay, what's the other game? The other? Dawn of Man, you want to see? Yeah, I want to see wanna what Dawn of Man roll your dice is. on Dawn I'm, of Man? I'm rolling the dice. Because Graveyard Keeper looks like it could be all right. Okay. But I don't okay. know if it looks like I appreciate like it that you want to know. Yeah, here comes Dawn yeah. of Man. This is... Madruga Works Limited. Madruga Works Limited Madruga. comes to you with Dawn of Man. So far, it has one ranking for, rating, rating for five, for five stars. stars. 12,000 years ago. <laughs> oh, okay. So this is actual Dawn of Man. This is like, hey, ancestors, eat it. <laughs> That's what they're saying yeah. here. With the, guide the first humans. Oh, boy. Yeah, see, no. Grave, you have, running a graveyard is better than guiding the first humans. Yeah, hunt. Graveyard Keeper looks like it might be the one. All right, there you go, then. Yeah. I'm taking 4K, I Brain Breaker. Game and bestsellers theme Christmas bundle. This looks like RuneScape almost. Yeah. Gather. Blessing taking. This graveyard looks like good RuneScape keeper. actually. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna get gra Graveyard Keeper. All right, Let's great. Do it. There you go. Nobody wants to. All right. So usually the way we'll, we'll do it is we we'll look at the list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Usually we'll read off the list. We'll have a better selection. The mm -hmm. menu limited today because it's a Monday, not yeah. the usual PSN update. So we got what we got. But. Check back next week for us to really start ranking these games. Right, Kevin? 104. Think we'll make it, Kev? No? Kevin shakes his head no. Uh, time for this week's X's and O's. This is where we give you the PlayStation discussion topics of the week. Uh, we're starting with what you'd expect probably for 2020 PlayStation 5 watch. This, this needs a theme. Okay, it sounds it. like I don't. Uh, I mean, you're on. You're on the spot. No, what, buddy. Did I, what, did I, what have I done? Wait, you, can, you can say it. I'll give you a theme. Um, Get, all right, introduce yeah. the whole thing in. Uh, PlayStation 5. Watch. See, I want like that newsy, like it's mm. intense. There's something happening. Yeah. Like when the Walter Jacobson would give the homeless report in Chicago. Remember this? This is a dated Fox 32 reference. <laughs> My father listened to podcasts. He'd love it. Uh, so back in the old days, Walter Jacobson, uh, a Chicago reporter on TV, right? What he would do, Kevin, is like, once every five, ten years, he would dress up as a homeless person and go live out in the streets wow. for like a couple weeks to like get like this is what it's like on <laughs> the streets. <laughs> you know what it, I mean? This sounds very familiar, honestly. I'm sure so every everybody does it. Was this a bit on Full House? 
<laughs> no, this really I happened. I sworn there might have been a full house. Walter Jacobson did this. Dedicated to this. I digress. Let's recap some of the stuff that's happening with the PlayStation 5. Blessing, since this is our, our first show. Yes. Where are your hype levels for the PlayStation 5? Uh, hmm. I'm, they're at an eight. Okay. You know? Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. There's room room to go up, but all in all, I'm excited. Yeah? Yeah. So far, the haptic tr- triggers and no loading ain't doing it for you, huh? Uh, they're doing I mean, enough. They're for doing you. enough for me. Okay. You yeah, know, yeah. I, I got to see some launch titles. I got to see some uh, That's what, what, what these new features, what more of the new features are going to be. Sure. You know? Yeah. Uh, so here's what I got for you: is quick rundown, taste testers to get the discussion started. Uh, number one on the PlayStation Five Watch: Sony has a patent for a new PlayStation controller. This is Austin Goslin over at Polygon. Uh, the design itself is similar to the familiar DualShock Four design that most players are used to with the PlayStation Four. The new controller has the same layout for its face buttons, directional pad, and analog sticks. The only real departure on the front of the controller is that there's no PlayStation button visible Mm. on the patent design. Mm. The back of the controller is where things get a little more interesting. The patent contains potential designs for the new controller, though they're not final, that include two new buttons. The new buttons appear to be programmable to perform the functions of other buttons on the controller, so you could have them do the same thing as the circle or square buttons if you wanted. Basically, paddles. You mm. know what I mean? Remember yeah. how they just they just introduced this new thing, the yep. license deal, you plug in there, you got paddles at the bottom, or buttons, you know, put there and paddles in the back. Mm. Also Xbox Elite, right? However, they go on to say, it's worth noting that the proposed design does not feature a micro USB port on top. I'm sorry, does feature a micro USB port on top of the controller, the same as the DualShock 4, where, 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 well, while the PlayStation 5 controller is supposed to have a USB-C port instead. Hmm. So, it's possible this is an iteration of an older controller. You would think there's lots to talk about there, but it gets even more interesting. Over at IGN, Chris Priestman writes, leaked dev kit photos reveal new controller. Kevin, you want to shoot the next one up for me? Uh, The controller matches up with a recent patent that Sony pushed through for its DualShock 5 controller uh, in that it looks like a lot like the DualShock 4 gamepad, uh, but is slightly chunkier. There does appear to be a PlayStation Home button on this version, which lines closer to the patent previously seen before the most recent one. Because remember, mm-hmm. yeah, this is the second one already. Uh, if you scroll down a bit more, Kev, you're going to see the actual... What? Where are you? Scroll back up. No, you can do it live. You don't have to cut off. When they say no PlayStation button, they're talking about the button below the touchpad, right? That middle button? Or are they talking about something else? They're talking about the one the, the, below the touchpad. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It so, is missing. Oh. Kevin, go... I'm sorry. On, number, on the leaked dev kit, reveal IGN Priestman. You clicked on the recent patent. Click on the actual IGN link I have there. IGN link, PlayStation 5. No yeah, okay. PlayStation button. We'll get to that in a second. Yeah. Um, so then here you go. Yeah, if you scroll down. Scroll down. There's the, Here you go. And then one more. It's pro- blocked by the privacy. That's the one they're talking about, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it looks chunkier. Uh, there does appear to PlayStation Home button in this version, which lines closer with the pa- patent previously seen mm. before the most recent one. What can't be seen in the photos are the new triggers that are expected to be found on the back of the PlayStation 5's controller. Uh, they, these were revealed in the patent just after Sony revealed the PlayStation 4 back button attachment, which happened again over break as well. We also can't get that much of a look at the abdact- at, at <laughs> adaptive triggers mm-hmm. that will presumably replace the standard L2 and R2 buttons. Uh, these new triggers let you feel the different resistance, obviously, as we've talked about before and for. So, blessing. Do you believe anything you're seeing or hearing right now? What, what's your read on this no PlayStation button patent? And then what do you think of this goofy-ass leak over here? I mean, I don't not believe it. Yeah? Like, I, it, the back paddles align with the... Um, the, the, at- the attachment they put the out? The attachment they yeah. put out for the PS4 controller. And so... Kevin, if you actually can look in the dock, too, there's... on uh, Right ab- above where you are, I think, DualShock uh, 4 back button attachment hyperlink. If you could throw that up. I forgot that that happened while we were gone, too. We should hmm. point that out. And so yeah, that aligns, and I mean, I'm I'm I kind of buy it honestly. My thing about it is this: I 100% buy that they've patented a controller yeah. with the <laughs> back buttons built in already. And you can scroll the that, yeah, this you can play this announcement trailer. Do you think it's a different type of con- like it's not the standard controller? I've been box. down this road so many times in 13 years. Of mm-hmm. here's this, yeah. I'll never forget the PlayStation 3 controller that they patented with the move balls on top of it. Yeah, where you're gonna be able to break it in half. And it's mm-hmm. like I get patents get filed all the time. What I when you see this where they're talking about having uh, we're watching the thing here for the back button attachment for the current DualShock 4. The fact that they're making this and officially licensing it makes me believe more credence in that. Mm-hmm. Moving the Removing the PlayStation button doesn't make much sense to me. With the exception, I guess, that you could make the touchpad default to that. 
since the I mean, touchpad really even, isn't getting used that and much maybe, outside of maps. Maybe if this was a thing, it would be in the patent. But <coughs> I was thinking like maybe it is like a um, like a touch thing of like you touch where the like maybe it's, maybe it's a PlayStation logo mm -hmm. where the button mm -hmm. button was, and you touch it and it does the same thing because it's not like you need that for gameplay. I just, um, I mean, I know obviously it seems like we're too far gone. Even the touchpad in general, I'd be fine losing. I, I mean, I'm with you. The only thing is like backwards compatibility. Like, yeah, how do you play PS4 point. games without it? Uh, which is kind of a bummer because, like, you know, I don't hate the touchpad because it's nice to have a big select button. But like the actual function functionality of swiping up, swiping left, all all that stuff wasn't really utilized well. Um, you know, and there's not really, I mean, there's not much motivation for third parties to use it because it's not like Xbox has a touchpad. Hundred um, percent. And so that just you know, it feels like it's there just to be there. I do, I do wish that uh, more developers did what CD Projekt Red did, where it's like you swipe up to do your map, and you swipe, I think, right or swipe down for like another option. Yeah, like using it in that way. Um, Days Gone did a good job of that too. Did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah usually, I mean, first parties, you know, they'll they'll always use, utilize those things. But, yeah, I think Odyssey um, used it too, where I can trace around the map and move stuff and maybe pinch mm -hmm. and zoom. I forget though. But I'm with you that it seems like. It's few and far between. Yeah, where the majority of stuff I'm playing, like, it is it's just a giant. It wasn't button. used enough for me to be like, oh yeah, most of the most most of the geography of this controller should be dedicated to this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the only thing where I'm like, PS4 games that do use it are the are the thing where that makes makes me think that this is going to be this this is here to stay. What gets fascinating for me? Oh, actually, you know what? Let's bring in Mitchell Seafield, who wrote into patreoncom slash games. This week, I asked everybody, since it's our debut show, what their favorite PlayStation game of all time was. Mitchell said, "Kingdom Hearts." Uh, when I was a kid, I used to watch my brother uh, play through it, and it brings back great and not so great memories. <laughs> uh, Mitchell's question, however, is, "What changes, if any, do you want to see from the Dual Shock, the next Dual Shock?" <clears throat> Oh, that's a good question. And see, that's where you you bring up backwards compatibility, and that's what starts like I feel like pinning you down in so many different directions. Yeah, right? because I I would love to see it go, but yeah, because of backwards compatibility that becomes hard. The um, which call it the backlight. Oh, I, the light bar. The, yeah, the light bar. Um, <laughs> can't get rid of it. Can't get rid of it because it's yeah. VR, right? Yeah. And so. You can't do much with it. I I've always yeah. thought the only thing I've thought I I could do for different rounded nubs. Mm -hmm. I think they're too. I, I there's something about them being rounded the way they are. I don't like they're like giant thumbs. Creeps me out, Kev. You know what I mean? Yeah. Still with, a great controller. Love the controller. Mm -hmm. I feel like with the LED, I want the. I would like the option to turn it off. Yeah. Yes. Because like I, I feel like that's just that's what kills thing. the battery. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, yeah. we always assume that, but I feel like well, you can dim the battery. Or you can dim the lights to make the them. The PS3, they were wireless too, right? Yeah. Yep. Did the battery last forever? Yeah. Oh. Longer, not yeah. forever. Yeah. And even if, even if it is like a, a game by game thing of like this game, this game allows you to turn off the light bar because this game doesn't use the light bar for like a function that is needed in the game. You know at, that at the very least I feel like would be nice. I don't know if they would do, but I I would like if they did. <laughs> um, and yeah, like I mean the other things I'd want from it are things that they've already kind of said. So USB C. Yeah, oh um, yeah, and they're already doing that. They're thing doing that. Um, the haptic triggers sound cool yeah I'm, I'm i mean i'm down with all with all this stuff yeah yeah i mean that's what it seems to be uh, my quick cursatory google kev if you want to try to see if i'm wrong anywhere else is google saying 25 hours for a ps3 controller versus the four to eight for a ps4 <clears throat> oh yeah okay i, I thought was, i thought you were saying 25 hours for a ps4 controller i was like uh, hell no <laughs> i gotta replace mine yeah no i mean it's the same way with like a nintendo pro controller right Mm -hmm. I feel like I charged that once when I bought it, Dude. and it's never been. Yeah, <laughs> never I don't think I've ever charged that thing. <laughs> Just go, it's fine. Yeah, um, I that my thing with it, especially with the back pat, the back buttons, right? Is I feel if you're PlayStation, we're gonna get to this a little bit later, I think, too. When we talk, all right, maybe the next story actually. Let me see if I do that before. We go there. Yeah, okay, hold on. Mm -hmm. Let's bring it in, but keep this uh, back paddle, back yeah. button thing in our mind. All right. Next one's Digital Foundry. Uh, Richard Ledbetter, PS5 and Xbox One Series X GPU specs leak. I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, if you understand GPUs and teraflops and everything else, Digital Foundry has a great write-up over there. Hmm. Greg Miller does not have that kind of bandwidth, so here are two paragraphs that I think summarize it. <clears throat> On the face of it, the AMD leak confirms a number of spec points and infers several more. To begin with, it's clear that Microsoft designed Series X to push the limits of console beyond, beyond the established norms in the pursuit of maximum performance. If the 52 compute unit makeup of the processor is confirmed, the cost implementation... <laughs> implication is eye-opening to say the least 
Based on what we've seen from the RX 5700 series, adding 50% to the shader count and adding in an 8-core Zen 2 CPU cluster on top of that, along with other under uncore elements like the display controller and media engine, suggests a, pro a, pro a processor far larger than expected. This leak paints the Series X chip as even more of a beast than I expected, but with that in mind, just how expensive will it be? Meanwhile, the PlayStation 5 spec outlined in the leak points towards a device with more of a balance between price and performance. Assuming we're looking at a not implausible 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 and one terabyte SSD, this is still an expensive looking device, but stacked up against the monstrous Series X, it obviously stands more of a chance of hitting the Magic 399 pr launch price point that served PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 4 Pro so well. On the face of it, Microsoft has the more powerful machine, but some might say that in the console space, the price point is paramount importance. So, with that in mind, I wonder if the controller they're patenting and talking about with the back buttons here, right, mm -hmm. would be something similar to an Elite, more akin to an Elite, that is sold separately than the actual console. That this wouldn't actually be the DualShock that ships with the PlayStation yeah. 5. I, I think it makes sense. Yeah. You know, I think it's something that the PlayStation audience would want. You know, I I, I think that um, that would provide competition to the Xbox Elite controller. And so I, I, I think that would be dope. I'd be into that. More than anything, and I can't stress this enough on our return show, mm -hmm. as I know Shuhei, Herman, everyone's listening. What PlayStation needs to figure out for next generation is a PlayStation 5, I guess, controller design lab. Yes. Yes. I would I mean That'd be I the already, thing I kill for. I have already wasted so much money on PlayStation 4 dual shocks, but if I could go in and make my own on a whim Dude, the way you can with Xbox, I would have a collection. Right? Yeah. Right? God, I love that Xbox design lab. Yeah. Mm. I think that that'd be that'd be super awesome. That'd be something I'd want, you know, want them to do early in the generation. Um man, this power stuff Does is it make sense to you? I I I, I understand some of the words, okay, okay. but most of the words probably not. Um, and we talked about this. I forget Briefly, if this was, yeah, I forget to, if this was on the post, post show. show. I think is when we did it. And so I, I guess I can, we can talk about it again here because uh, we were kind of talking about price point. You yeah. know, as far as what is the PS Five going to come out at? What is the Xbox Series X going to come out at? With the idea that the Xbox Series X is going to be more powerful, and I posited that you know it could be a situation where because we have the rumored two consoles for Xbox. Um, my idea is what if Xbox was like, hey, Series X 500, PlayStation is like 400 for the PS5, and then an Xbox or Microsoft is like, hey, we have an Xbox Series S also that we're putting out at 300. That is all digital you yeah. know, or you, whatever whatever copyist there might be to lower that price. Um, yeah, no, di no optical disk drive. It's all digital streaming yeah. games. Yeah. yeah, like what does that landscape look like? Do you, do you think there's a chance of that? Yeah, I do. I mean, again, like it's what we were talking about uh, on Games Daily today of P PlayStation Now versus Game Pass, where Game Pass is such a great deal and Microsoft is putting all their first party stuff on a day and date because they are hungry for the win. They are trying to make up ground. They are trying to establish that they're this thing for all gamers. And how do you do that? Right. Mm -hmm. And so I do think the fact that if they were to, uh, Phil said, right, uh, is Phil Spencer, obviously Xbox, has said that. They won't be outplayed on power this time around. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Series X makes sense that hey, this is the creme de la creme. This is our most expensive machine. It is going to be four ninety nine. It is going to be this hoss. It's going to basically be a PC underneath your TV. However, yeah, if you don't mind that, if you don't want that, we have this smaller, cheaper option. The problem is that I just don't feel that Xbox has done well enough in this generation to capitalize on that messaging and do it right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where I just don't know if like hmm. you're somebody who's been playing everything or what you probably have a PlayStation 4 based on numbers, right? You've played all these exclusives. You've had all these great things. They're asking you to take a chance on either, hey, this more expensive model or, hey, this lesser model. And neither of those sound too appealing if you've been happy playing Last of Us and, mm -hmm. you know, Secure, or, yeah, yeah, Bloodborne. And, yeah. you know, the list goes on here of things. Concrete Genie. Hell yeah. Because, well, I mean, that was going to be the next question to I was going to throw at you is do you think there is any chance PlayStation's like, here are two SKUs? No. <laughs> like, here's a PS4 and here's a PS4 with like less uh, memory or whatever it may be? No. Not yeah. a, on a chance. I think PlayStation is going to come out and say, this is what we are. I this think is what it is. They've found success. In, I mean, to, and so is, you know, uh, Xbox has found success on hey here's what it is at launch and then from launch hey here's the playstation pro here's the mm. xbox the s xbox one s right like yeah you iterate on it from there I, f I feel like 
it was a confusing message for PlayStation 3 to come out back in the day and be like, well, this one's backwards compatible. Well, this one's not. It'd be a similar mm-hmm. thing to, uh, I, well, I guess I shouldn't be. Every generation's different. Everything's a new b- ball of wax when you get there. I just feel like on this, I guess even that doesn't hold up because I was going to say on this m- console cycle that is more and more like uh, phones, it, it, when I think of the new iPhone, I think of the mm-hmm. new iPhone, but that's a lie, right? Because there is the cheaper iPhone and everybody gets there. Yeah. Everybody's under, uh, are able to understand that. Yeah. I just feel like for <laughs> Xbox, who has been playing behind since launch, right? It's not even it's since their announcement. Mm-hmm. They've been trying to catch up and make ground to come out with a not complicated, but convoluted message that mm-hmm. there's two SKUs and then also have to prove with their game library that's untested, their studios that are untested, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that, that's yeah. what PlayStation rolls into this next generation. Mm-hmm. Here's the PlayStation 5. You assume here's Horizon 2. You assume that's part of the launch lineup. Here are the next great games from the next developers you love teases mm-hmm. on all this different stuff. Like you, ass- I don't think it's beyond the realm of possibility. No, not at all. I'm 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 gonna say it pretty confidently, right? That like, it's totally possible and plausible that Naughty Dog has a teaser trailer for what their next game is. Really? After Last of Us Two? Yeah. I mean, think about it, right? When Uncharted Four shipped, or no, when Uncharted Three shipped, right? Uh, Last of Us trailer dropped the next time. The, like with the next week or whatever it was two weeks ago. I think the games have just gotten so big that. But again, like I don't think this by showing the trailer doesn't mean it's tomorrow. Yeah, I'm not true. saying it's a yeah. launch game. I'm saying like, hey, and like they did say they're working on a multiplayer. Like they're they're working on taking the Last of Us multiplayer and, and making a new iteration of what that's going to be. Sure. And so maybe they maybe they have like a small B team working on that. In that. Well, you figure like with a team the size of Naughty Dog, like obviously mm-hmm. you're shifting people. I, 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 and imagine what was happening while Last of Us was in full production. You had another team pre-producing whatever yeah. and working on it. And then now that you're in the home stretch of Last of Us Two, you peel people off and put them on that. I feel like I feel like that's going to be the continual baton passed between Naughty Dog. Where mm-hmm. they're not really two teams, but there's two teams of like, okay, cool, this is yeah. how we're pushing. As you're ramping down, another one's ramping up. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's beyond the realm of possibility, right, of a Spider-Man 2 teaser trailer. Yeah, that's not, I, I think that's, that has to be yeah. imminent. And you start I mean, go, not imminent, but When like, you start going yeah. down that list, right, like, you, you, it really is people like, I think Sucker Punch is going to be on the bench, right? Obviously, Ghost of Tsushima coming out this mm-hmm. year. Like, they won't be ready to tease what they're doing next, even though it should be infamous. I digress. Yeah. You figure Blue Point will be out with whatever the hell their game is that mm. they've been talking about forever. Like, it really comes down to how PlayStation wants to play it in terms of revealing enough, but not too much. And I think you can, without revealing too much, I think you can have three major first parties on that stage when you show what the PlayStation 5 is and put a price tag on it that are like, bam, bam, bam. You know, mm-hmm. Sony Interactive Entertainment, Sony Interactive Entertainment, Sony Interactive Entertainment. Yeah. The way these trailers start, and you're like, holy fuck, they're delivering on this. Hmm. We'll see. But I think you do that, and I don't think Xbox is, but wait, Halo, and then we have these guys working on this. And they're going to be like, who are you? You know what I mean? I don't understand what that, that seems like a cool idea, but is that enough, you know? Yeah. I'm a curious. new Senua? Like, I mean, like, I like, don't get me wrong. Mm. I'm, I think that's awesome oh, yeah. they're making it. I'm saying, does that stand up to what Naughty Dog would be doing, what Spider-Man would be, what Horizon would be? Mm. Like, that's... It's it. our sales now, yeah. And that's the thing of, like, you're sitting there thinking about how people are going to if you're buying one, if you can only buy one console at launch, what's it going to be? Mm-hmm. But like, it could go the completely opposite that PlayStation plays it too close to the vest. They have a horizon at launch or whatever. Sure. But Microsoft has mm-hmm. fucking halo infinite. And guess what? It is actually rad and everybody loves it. And they're selling a cheaper thing and you get Xbox game pass and you get X cloud and you're playing anywhere you want to play. Mm-hmm. It's going to be like I've said, and now that we're here, it's still doesn't, it still rings true. Yeah. It's going to be the most interesting year of gaming in and it's, the longest time. It's happening this year. Which yeah, we're in part. it. It's, yeah, it's we're begun. You are on the ride already. Yeah. Like, and that's the other thing of like, we don't have to wait long. You assume, right? PlayStation's thing was in February for PlayStation Four. Yeah. Are we getting a February event for PlayStation Five? I'm becoming. I think it's not as much a slam dunk as a lot of people are reporting. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are talking about it like it's a done thing. That of course there's gonna be a February event. I really think the Wired articles and the way they first out information step in and fill the gap of what Cerny said on stage for PlayStation 4. Yeah, that's the thing is, like, what what would they say? If, like, if they were going to do the exact same thing that they did with PlayStation 4, um, the exact same type of event, if they had that event again, it's like, what's left to say that you could say at that event, right? Like, we know know the power of it. We know the features. We know, um, you know, some of the teases with, like, Bluepoint. Um, How much more do you have to say at a reveal event that you are then going to return for 
theoretically E3 for. Yeah. Where they could just mm-hmm. like maybe do another Wired article in February and then come at E3 and just go hard. Yeah. Here's the box. Here's the price. Here's what it, you know. They they can come out and kill, 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 kill. Mm-hmm. And especially if they've, you know tantric sexed it to this point where <laughs> we've had all these teases right but we yeah. haven't had the moment yet we haven't had the money shot yeah and that but then it also opens up an interesting conversation for xbox of like we, at game awards it was such a bold yeah holy shit they revealed the box here but if they come out at their own event or e3 again they're like you've already seen the xbox series x but let's talk about the xbox series S. yeah you know what i mean and it is a different thing in a cheaper option mm-hmm. and that's where they like lay out the prices yeah lay out the launches yeah, launch yeah. titles all that stuff Exciting times we live Very in. Very exciting. Now, yeah. here's something interesting to the same PlayStation yeah. 5 wrinkle conversation. If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, Ed, Eddie's going to tell you about it over at GameSpot, but I'll tell you the, uh, the heart of it. Tonight, or right now, I guess, CES has started. There really? Is, there is, tonight, <laughs> I there, didn't realize that. Tonight, there is a Sony press conference at CES at 5 p.m. Pacific time. There was a long discussion internally with me and a few other people of like, do we delay PS I Love You, XOXO, mm. episode one? Do we do it the we decided to do it the normal way because I don't believe in the, I'll eat these fucking words Tuesday morning <laughs> that they're going to do anything there. It doesn't make any sense. Eddie's article reads like this over at GameSpot. Sony's CES 2020 landing page that teases the future is coming. The teaser goes on to offer some idea of what to expect from Sony's briefing, albeit at a very high and ambiguous level. Hmm. Quote, at CES 2020, Sony is unveiling a unique vision of the future, bringing creativity and technology together like never before to unleash new sensations and emotion, reads the message. One element of Sony's future is is the PlayStation 5, which is scheduled to launch this year. There is no word as of yet if Sony will share any PlayStation 5 details during its CES briefing, however. So why do you say there's no way? So there's it's a double-edged sword. There's I don't think there's any way anything major happens. Lots of people were like, I've seen tweets to me all break. Are they mm-hmm. going to show the box, do you think? There's this rumor that the PlayStation 5 is going to be backwards compatible with every version of PlayStation ever. And... That's a rumor yeah. that, that I was able to trace back, and it looked like Hip Hop Gamer said something somewhere mm. about it. I don't, first off, think that they would ever show the box at CES with no fanfare, the no. blog not telling you, the, the PlayStation account not telling you. Mm-hmm. I don't even, and I'm an idiot, as I've pointed out many times, think backwards compatibility for all generations That's is not possible no. because that was the whole thing with the cell processor on yeah. the PS3 and the fact that my PlayStation 4 doesn't let me play the PS3 games I bought digitally. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and so... I, I would like to say 100% not a chance in hell they do anything. Mm-hmm. But I could see there being some weird we there's going they're going to the PlayStation mm-hmm. 5 will be mentioned during this. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it'll be doubling b- down on haptic triggers and, yeah, and that's no my reloading th- that's my- or uh, no uh Loading, no loading. Yeah, uh, the SSD. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think if they do show up, it will be, hey, here's all the stuff we've talked about in the Wired article. Here's yeah. here's the Spider-Man thing where we yep. show you Spider-Man on PS4. Now here's Spider-Man again on PS5 with no load times or with like, you know, lower load times, you know, as opposed to like the 15 seconds fast travel. Here's the same thing in two seconds with the SSD. You know, I think that is the best case scenario. Yeah. Because like if I... I if they were going to show a box or show like any significant new information, they would have invited people. I imagine. Yeah, they're, they would have made a, a point to do all this. Yeah. But then it's that normal thing of like, especially in a vacuum where it's been everybody's been on two weeks of break, mm-hmm. that I've seen these stories circulate and go, and it's just like, again, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe tonight they show the box and I look like a moron when this posts on <laughs> Tuesday morning. But also, that would totally be the PSI love you slash beyond way of mm. we record the show, that's great, and then a press release comes through that just devastates everything. Yeah. So. That's how it's going to be in 2020. You never know what's happening next. Blessing. Yes. Would you like to check in with the readers for Reader Mail? Let's do it. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames to send us your questions, comments, concerns, favorite PlayStation games, and everything under the PlayStation Sun that we call Shuhei. Uh, we're going to start with... Let's piggyback off of what we've been doing here with all this PlayStation 5 talk and go to Mitchell George, whose favorite PlayStation game is Spider-Man. Web slinging is the bomb. Yeah. Which exclusive of Sony's do you think is most likely to be resurrected for the launch of the PlayStation 5? Sort of like Killzone for the PlayStation 4. Personally, I'm hoping for Infamous. Mitchell, Res- stop hoping right now. Yeah, no, stop hoping. Resurrected. So we're talking about like an old one that's not necessarily like... He uses resurrected loosely because Killzone was far from dead to mm-hmm. be resurrected. Maybe he means in a rebooted sense where Shadowfall wasn't like Killzone 3, 2, 1. Oh, but okay. in general, I think he's looking for like what... what Outside of, I don't, I don't think we can use Horizon. We, I, yeah. If Horizon's not there, I'll be shocked. Of course, I've been looking for a Batman game for a long time. Haven't I, Barrett? Yeah. Thank you. Do you think, 
Well, probably. Do. I was gonna say, do you think Horizon is more likely than Spider Man Two? Yes. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Time wise, I think one hundred percent. I still think that you get a tease for it. I think they they do some, especially now owning Insom. I think you want to get out in front of that of just hey, a reminder. Mm-hmm. I PlayStation Five is going to be the launch event, the whatever reveal event. I think is twofold, where mm-hmm. it's like number one, here's the system and here's the launch lineup, and number two, here's what's coming. Here's what yeah, yeah, yeah. we need to get you make you understand What's the why your first this. year look like for yeah. PlayStation because that's exactly what Xbox will be doing too with all their studios and you need to make a case for this war. Mm-hmm. Likely, I mean it's one hmm. of those resurrected at launch. I don't know that that many are likely, right? Yeah, that's where it gets interesting. And I, I, I understand you bring up. I, I'd love to be caught off guard. You know what I mean? Um, and say and that there is an infamous. Here we go. This is how it's going to be. We got another infamous. And I, I would flip out if there was another infamous of some kind or a reboot or whatever. But I don't think Sucker Punch would want to give that up. And I don't think that. I don't think so- Sucker Punch would give it up willingly, even though they, uh, they can be ordered to do whatever Sony tells them to do. Uh, and I don't think Sony would want to take it away from them and give it to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Ghost of Tsushima looks awesome. I don't know how you feel about that one. But like you look through it, right? Of like, so like, you're running just down the studio list, right? Bend. No. Mm. Ben won't be teasing anything. I, not even Days Gone Two. I wouldn't imagine. No. I, I think they're so far out from that since Days Gone took so long. Granted, I'm sure there was stops and restarts and stuff like that. Gorilla, I think it's going to be Horizon Two. Mm-hmm. Insomnia will be uh, already on the fence there. Uh, London Studio, sure, but I think I think you save London Studio to do something until you're ready to launch uh, Blood and Truth Two with probably PlayStation VR Two or whatever mm-hmm. they call that. Do you think they would do Blood and Truth Two or just like a new <clears throat> IP, like a new PSVR IP? I think because I I think I I haven't finished Blend Truth. You monster! Um, I love Blend Truth. I played most of it. Yeah. I forget why I didn't finish it, but um, you know that that doesn't that's not a game that would strike me as something that you would turn into a franchise. Well, here's I think you I think you would, mm-hmm. be, and it could even be new characters and new everything. I think mm-hmm. you do it because you're trying to double down in a sense of what happened with Uncharted to Uncharted Two, mm-hmm. where a lot of people didn't own PS3s when Uncharted came. So when Uncharted Two came, they're like, "Oh, I've heard great things about this. I'll buy this." Mm-hmm. And so I think that if you're going to be interested in PSVR two, in hopefully what another two years, yeah. year and a half maybe, probably two years, because yeah. um, I think it'll be the year after PlayStation Five. I think when you're you'd start trying to double down on the names you do have. So hey, Blood and Truth Two's out. Oh fuck, I mm-hmm. I remember I remember people talking about that. I remember Kevin talking about that on the PlayStation VR show before mm-hmm. he got bit by a snake. I remember that. Interesting. That's Interesting. me future casting what's going to happen to you. Snake bites you, Kevin. Then the snake dies. Kevin's blood's venomous. <laughs> Everybody knows that. That's a real thing. Uh, continuing on, Media Molecule, it'll be Dreams, but yeah. Dreams will already be out by then, right? Right. Naughty Dog, I, again, I think has the best chance of having a teaser trailer for something that they're going to do. Bad Jesus, God. No. <laughs> And then you're into like, you know, I mean, Polyphony Digital. All right. So you have a Gran Turismo there, right? Yeah. San Diego, be a Gran the show that'll be everywhere. And then uh, uh, Santa Monica, you definitely could have got a War II teaser. But like, and now I'm getting crazy. Yeah. Now, now I'm getting crazy. Yeah. Now I'm just like, oh, throw it out there. It's going too hard. I think it's going to be Horizon for a launch. I think Spider Man as a tease. I think Naughty Dog for a tease. And then I think that's when you bring in From for Blood so- Blood Wars, Bloodborne 2. I think you do something there. Is Radio Dawn's not owned by. PlayStation? No, no, they're making uh, Oculus games. Why did I think they were? They make really good VR games now. Because hmm. they're, they, I mean, they fall so into the camp of yeah. uh, um, Quantic Dream. 1886, where, right? Yep. And okay. they did, uh, um, before that, they did the uh, PSP God of Wars. Hmm. So like, it's one of those things they had a working relationship with them forever. Mm-hmm. And they just never sealed the deal. You know what hmm. I mean? Never made it official. As I always say, why buy the cow and you get the sex for free? That's what they were doing over there. I don't know if this is likely. In mm. fact, I don't think this is likely, but it's something I would like. A new Ratchet and Clank. Mm. Um, mm. I think Ratchet and Clank would be awesome. The 2015 one was really fun. That was I, the one with the movie, right? Yeah, the that, was the, the movie that was a really remake. good one. Yeah, that was a really fun one. Um, but that was developed by Insomniac, who I'm sure is full um, full in on Spider-Man but right now. But correct me mul- if I'm wrong, that was Insomniac North Carolina, Yeah, right? they have multiple so, teams. Yeah, so. exactly. I think Insomniac Burbank is still going to be working on Spider-Man 2 forever. But I think North Carolina, I, I, I die, they, they are, once they wrap up this, or I think they did wrap it up, right? That VR project that was part of the deal, not PlayStation VR, but mm-hmm. uh, whatever, the other one, Oculus? Not Oculus, whatever. The other VR game that's not mm-hmm. PSVR game, Five. once that's wrapped up, they're probably loose. Five. Ah, uh, yeah. Hmm. But yeah, I think that's the most plausible lineup for it. The debut but you got in that that all that said like right like i'm very much talking out my ass at a, a sony that wants to hit a home run right away when in reality 
They probably think the machine's going to be a home run. They mm-hmm. probably think that Horizon's going to be a home run. There's not that much they have to do. Yeah. yeah. You know, if they come out and they launch with, or they announce with a big game, a big first party game or two, and then have it, indies showcased and maybe have like a bunch of um, uh, second party or like a bunch of par- uh, partnerships, right? Like something like uh, Orca 86, I think that would be enough for a launch. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we already got, um, what was that game that was announced at Game Awards? The first PS5 game? <laughs> Uh, Godfall. Godfall. Was it Godfall? Yeah. I mean, that's already kind of a. Yeah, that's a a, something. It's that, something. Uh, that was I've like, heard. I've I've seen gameplay of it like floating online, and it looks like it could be cool. Yeah, it was Godfall. Godfall. Yeah. It's like yeah, sure. Right. It's like that's like I looked at that and I was like, yeah, this is like what I would expect for a launch of a. Yeah. It was just like weird, generic, I'm, and I, I I don't know shit about it. I'm mm-hmm. not talking shit. You know what I mean? But I'm just like, I'm saying, hey, I saw clips. It looked like it could. You be know decent. more than I do about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, Barrett Courtney, could I ask a favor from your old friend Greg? Could I get more tea and water? Starting to hear the pipes are starting to croak a bit. You know what I mean? All right, bye, Barrett. <laughs> he doesn't even smile when he takes it. You know? You used to smile, love me. Barrett. Smile, Barrett. Smile. Oh, this middle finger. <laughs> oh, was that the middle? I thought it was his index. He's pointing to the. Oh, it is. No, that's the, his oh, middle. Yeah, that's it his is middle. middle. He's flicking me off. Oh right yeah. Now. Alex writes in. Kevin's flicking me off too. To patreon.com slash kind of funny games, wanting to be part of PSI Love You XOXO, and says, Welcome to 2020, kind of funny crew. Hope you all had a restful break. Simple question to start the year What are your gaming goals slash resolutions for this year? Last year, I tried to reach 25 platinums. Alas, I only reached 22. And this year, I'm going to aim for at least 30. I'm also going to try to hold off on pre ordering games until I've listened to trusted sources for their impressions. Do you have any? gaming games for the new year mm. much love from hong kong alex so i want to play through uh some of the playstation exclusives that i haven't played okay what's on the list and so right now i'm going through horizon okay. uh, which i talked about uh, i'm gonna uh, complete death stranding yeah bloodborne is on mm. the list which i'm curious on how that's gonna go because i've tried bloodborne multiple times yeah and i get stuck in like the first like 15 minutes of it because it just kicks my ass but i i want to push through it because i've seen people play and get far and enjoy it who i wouldn't expect brian altano yeah like, like like people i've seen people fall in love with that game that i that i wouldn't necessarily put in that category of people who like love games that are punishing and that like, games that are difficult right and you know it's this is more so one of those like i want to get i i want to push myself things yeah um and so did you do Sekiro? I tried Sekiro. Yeah. I played the, like the first probably like two hours. Yeah. Um, and I got way further in Sekiro than I did in Bloodborne. But I think Sekiro is probably more forgiving as far as like the save points from what I can, what I can, what I can, what I played. What you even told you? Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, Sekiro didn't necessarily like. I got to a point where I, I started dying a lot, and I was just like, I I don't feel like doing this. I don't. It's not that I don't have the will to push through, but it's it's more so that I don't feel like I'm getting enough out of the game than like what the game's getting out of me sure um and so bloodborne aesthetically and stylistically kind of appeals to me more so than dark souls or sekiro or neo or any any other types of these games um and it's a playstation exclusive so i want to get into it for that um and so that's on the list and then uh concrete genie i want to oh play yeah through. buddy yeah um i have that downloaded and so it's whenever i get time i want to jump into that and play it and uh yeah any other playstation game that i haven't like gone down a list or anything to look through and see what i've missed but um tearaway i want to play tearaway wow um, okay yeah because unfold is on ps4 and so that that's what the list looks like right now i might at some point sit down and be like okay what have I, what have i missed um because i know i haven't played gravity rush um i don't know if i'm going to play gravity rush 2 gravity rush number one on vita was the best so yeah, yeah if you're gonna I, play one play that you play two right yeah is it not is it not worth it's more of the same it was a similar thing where i played it and i dropped out of it Mm -hmm. like i i forget how much i put into it but it was like okay it's cool it's more but it wasn't pushing it a certain it wasn't pushing it beyond what i already played Mm -hmm. so it was it was very much one of those like it was was similar to what we're talking about of like man i'm playing this but i was always close to the platinum on vita why don't i just go back and do that and i Mm -hmm. never did that either it's just Mm -hmm. there's only so many hours in the day i've been where you're at like bloodborne i've started multiple times as well and never done what like altano did where he played and pushed and eventually broke through that other yeah. side where it was fun and it's just like with the limited amount of time i have to play games and the amount of games coming out uh blue no green mm-hmm. i said blue there's no blue over there like, <laughs> you show me blue green and red t-backs um yeah 
I've tried to push through it, and it's just like, well, damn, I don't want to. I want to go on and do something else. And mm-hmm. I yeah. get it. And I think the thing that when I was first playing Bloodborne, when it originally came out, I had a friend over who did play Dark Souls and all that stuff. He was like, oh, let me give it a go. And he just demolished the first area, and I was just like, man, I don't have it in me to just, like, I'm out here dying over and over again. And he, on his first try, is just, like, clearing these roads, and that kind of uh, that kind of deflated me a bit. But I think it was um, uh, this podcaster, Tim Router from Married to the Games, who... Uh, he started playing Bloodborne, and he's not necessarily he wasn't necessarily like a big Souls person at all. Um, and he got really into it, and so and like seeing Altano get into it, yeah. Um, when he first played it, like that stuff is that that those are the stories that give me hope, and so I want to <laughs> I want to see if I can become one of those people. Okay. Um, if I if I give up, I give up. Um, on that, but we'll we'll see. Um, and that's like that's lumped in also with like kind of a professional goal. Since I'm gonna be on a PlayStation podcast, and so I might sure. as well. Um familiarize myself even more I mean, with first the, off you should go play fucking peace walker all right i mean you have multiple avenues are you to gonna give peace me a, 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 a psp uh, i guess i can i can get on P, on vita can i you get it on playstation 4 peace walker i can't get peace walker on ps4 can i yeah I'm, i mean i'll double check in case i'm crazy because there I was the time where there was uh i think it was released on ps3 like we released on ps3 if it's on ps4 i will play it 100 percent, but i don't think it's on ps4 because this is the one where, am I confusing the HD collection that I reviewed for? No, you might be right. Because I know, I've, I'm pretty sure it's on PS3. No, it definitely is on P- It's the HD collection. Yeah. Hold on. Metal Gear. Oh. Like, the only Metal Gear Solids on PS4, I believe, are, like, five Ground Zeroes in um, the big one. Uh, Phantom Pain. Phantom Pain, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, you're right. I'm confused. I do look dumb. Well, why don't you just turn on your PS3 and play it? Uh, because I got rid- I got rid of my PS3. It had the yellow light of death. Oh, okay, that's yeah. fair. My apologies, then. Um, you got two of them? Yeah. I'll I'll borrow your PS3 and play Peace Walker. I mean, if you want to play it on Vita, I'm not gonna stop you. If you want to play it on PSP, I'm. Not I gonna think stop I actually you. tried it on Vita, but I didn't like how it controlled. It's hard, yeah. yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> what was that, Kevin? <laughs> Now, here's where... He said he likes his job. <laughs> here's where we get nutty about it, everybody. I will gladly turn on my PS3 and play Peace Walker with you. Real? Is that... I mean, are we oh thinking... God, are we uh, I think, I, think, I, think I have my transferring uh, saved somewhere. I never threw away my Vita, obviously, or my PSP. Is is this going to be like a kind of funny stream? Fuck yeah, it could On be. twitch.tv slash kind of funny yeah, games. If you didn't know we're streaming yeah. to you, I haven't talked a lot about that on the shows yet. I have, like I said, I have two PS3s. Oh, I have my PS3 I, set to I go. never finished Peace Walker. Guys, Barrett, <laughs> you're in the room. Are you doing <laughs> it with us, Barrett? What's up? Again, you the this? only Metal Gear game I've ever played to survive, so I'd be very Jesus long. Jesus fucking oh, Christ. Christ. Do, do you Was you his mic a... on? Did they hear that? Yeah, they heard Did they hear that, that blasphemy? Yeah, really do you have an upsetting. Xbox One, Barrett? No. Oh, okay. I was going to say, because two and three are in a collection on Xbox One. Yeah. Hmm. That's disappointing. That's really disappointing. I'm sorry. Like I just never played. Boys, I, I'm booting that PS3 up when like, I get it. I just grew up in the wrong time where, the- where I was uh, when I was growing up. Like that was just not in my field of view as a kid. And so by the time I had learned about them, yeah, it's like hard to play them on current consoles and stuff like that. And then I had, it is hard to play them. And yeah. then I the only reason I played Survive was because I got assigned it at IGN. So that was the only reason I played it. Man, it wasn't like out. I was going out of my way what, to only wait, play Survive. Okay? Wasn't there a re-release of 1, 2, and 3 in some sort of collection? On PS3. Yeah. On PS3. On PS3. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And Peace Walker is included in that? That was the weird one where that one was included in like the European version. I reviewed this years ago, so you, I'm sorry if this is all bu- bullshit. But it was included on that one in... Europe, and then not in America. Is that right? Barry, you're missing out on the the greatest story in video games, man. It really is. It's such a good story. It really is. It's ridiculous. Wait, Barry's going to come back with some fucking bullshit. I don't know. Have you played Undertale Blessing? I have played. Dude, I love Undertale. He's got a platinum in it. I do, I do have the Undertale Platinum. Oh. Would I say that the story in Undertale is better than the story in Metal Gear Solid? No, he wouldn't because he's not a crazy person <sighs> like Barry Corbin. I, I, it's apples and oranges, man. I can't. I can't. Have you ever played Batman Arkham City? I have played Arkham <laughs> City. <laughs> Another great story. You know what I mean? Um, all right. So resolution, play Bloodborne, and then play Peace Walker with us. Cool. Perfect. Yep. And I'll have all my, if I can get my save, I'll have all my stuff. I'll be ready to go. We'll be cleaning some You're going to start fresh? Sounds pretty good to start fresh, though, doesn't it? it? Doesn't it? Because I don't think my tr- trophies carry over either. Yeah, that's another big you part need of it. Trophies. Fuck it. Yeah, let's start trophies. fresh. Everybody's starting fresh. 
Everybody get your PS3s ready tonight. I'm really excited. Update about 19 firmwares <laughs> or whatever the hell's probably happening. Let's just jump to the latest. It's fine. I know. I'm joking. Around. I'm aware. I'm cap. Uh, Chris Childers writes in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, well, first off, what's Chris's uh, favorite PlayStation game of all time? God of War PS4 because it made me feel like it made me feel for Kratos who didn't and who didn't love throwing the Leviathan axe. It was the best feeling in the world. Chris asked, though, do you think The Last of Us Part 2 will be better than the first? Mm. Before you answer, I bet Neil Druckmann's listening, so think about that. Mm. You want to piss off current Neil or former Neil? <laughs> uh, man, I mean, I don't really know how to judge that. Because, like, if if Last of Us 1 came out again and it just had better graphics, you know... Which it did. The remastered I guess version. It did. I guess that <laughs> it did. It did. Um... Like, how do you judge whether it's better or worse than the first? I, from what I've heard from you yeah, talking about it Greg Miller, on Games ta- Gamescast, talking about uh, some of the systems that are there, as far as, like, hiding and, like, people, like, enemies breathing. Or, no, they're, like, their heart rate being monitored. Like, some of the some of the crazy attention to detail uh, from Last of Us 2, I, I mean, gameplay-wise, you know, I can see it being better. Um, story-wise is one something that's that's hard to gauge right yeah. that's one that's one of those things where you have to kind of just play it and see i can't it's, that's hard to predict it's got such a tall mountain to climb yes because i think from the little bit i've played of it and i know this is blasphemy but from what i've played of last of us 2 at that preview event i think gameplay it's already better than last of us one interesting the problem is that you come the thing that everybody loves about last of us right was the story it mm-hmm. was the environmental storytelling. Mm-hmm. It was this relationship we had with Joel and Ellie as he did this and Joel's backstory. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Having those expectations and going into The Last of Us Part Two, is it possible for it to meet that? Is it even possible to get catch you off guard with that? Like mm-hmm. to have a giraffe moment? Like what that game's going to do is I, I don't I, I can't I don't envy them at all. Yeah. I mean it's not it's naughty dog. And so sure. like I feel like if a studio is going to live up to that it is naughty dog yeah if you look at uncharted like uh, you know uncharted 3 <coughs> some would say it's better than than uncharted 2 yeah well, i would say people would. i would say they're about the same but like uncharted i'll take that too i'll <laughs> yeah. take that too i'll take that victory uncharted 4 better than uncharted the better than the previous uncharted's i'd say um especially in terms of like like you know those games i feel like for what they are uh narrative games that go hard with like the graphics and, and the look and the world and pacing and storytelling and all that stuff all that stuff is improved by technology and so you look at kind of the systems that you're talking about with last was part two and that stuff that comes with being on a modern platform right not necessarily being pigeon- pigeonholed by what goes on in the ps3 sure. right technology has come far in the last seven years since last of us one came out and so i think that affords it an advantage i think um nar- narrative wise like I, I I love the story in Uncharted Four. I love the story in Lost Legacy. Um, and so like I think Naughty Dog still got it. Oh, they've got it for yeah. sure. That's yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's my whole thing too. Where it's like, when uh, all the teases for Last of Us Part Two have happened, even us coming out of the review event talking about or the preview event talking about what we saw, so many think pieces get written up of like, are they just doing tropes? Is it just this thing mm-hmm. we've seen before? Is, and it's like, I'm not that kind of consumer i guess of like uh stories I, I, and i'm also not akin to that i had to ask people like, is this a trope i don't even know i, mm-hmm. I know fridging the girlfriend from when it happened in green lantern and all this stuff but what, mm-hmm. i digress my thought my response there was like i give them the benefit of the doubt because i've enjoyed all their stories and i haven't you know I, they what i love about them is when they catch me off guard right like i didn't see the ending of uncharted 4 coming like mm-hmm. i didn't the, yeah. you know i mean like in last of or in last of jesus uncharted right when you get the young drake flashback the first time i remember being like what the fuck like mm-hmm. you know what i mean like there's so many amazing moments in those games that i feel like even if you think you know what you're looking at when you look at this these two trailers this one preview event mm-hmm. that you're into something you truly don't know what you're about to get mm-hmm. yeah part of me doesn't even like care if it's better per se like if it's as good as the first and you know that's- i think that's another way they've been trying to market it too right like that i think it's the fact that it's part two. Yeah, it feels more of like the same. It doesn't feel like a exactly. separate thing. It's the next chapter of the story. Yeah. Whereas it's not Uncharted 1, Uncharted 2, Uncharted 3, which are like, hey, we're our own thing. We're trying to stand on our own legs. Yeah. We're trying to Indiana Jones it as much as this is a part two to what's going on. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Let's stick on this Naughty Dog train. Ryan Amundi wrote in 
patreon.com slash kind of funny games just like you can where you can get the show ad free and the exclusive post show if uh, his long ass show wasn't good enough for yeah. you already uh his favorite game by the way was last of us it was a completely mm. different take on zombie slash action adventure genre which combines great storytelling realistic gameplay and packed with interesting characters ryan's question though is this what do you guys think of the what do you guys think is the next step for naughty dog after being done with the last of us part two will they release another uncharted game or a new ip i think they well when they do that multiplayer thing that they were talking about um uh if you're the, the one they were talking about when they when they um uh did the whole uncharted or not uncharted last of us event right. and there was no multiplayer and people were like what and then they came out and they were like hey just so you know like this legacy is gonna, the legacy of the last of us multiplayer is going to live on all, all that stuff i think we'll see that game i don't know in what form that game takes i don't know if it's like just going to be like a ps5 uh launch title that maybe takes place in the world of the last of us i don't know what that is but i think they do that and then i think they make their they put out their next big game which i don't think will be uncharted i don't think it'll be uncharted yeah i, I think, think it'll, it'll be, be new last ip of us. Yeah, I think it'll be new. It'll be a new, a, p- a completely brand new thing, mm-hmm. which is so exciting. Yeah, the thing I said, uh, this, this is the thing I tweeted forever ago, but I would love for them to do like a Mission Impossible kind of deal. Okay. Um, I was playing Uncharted: Lost Legacy um, back in October, and there is a specific scene where you meet the bad guy in that game, and the bad guy is so much a bad guy <laughs> from a Mission Impossible movie. Like, has that same kind of attitude, same kind of bravado, and. With those action sequences that you get from Uncharted, not I was gonna say you don't necessarily get those same action sequences in Last of Us, but like not last, to that scale, not to that scope. yeah, not to that grand. I feel like play well to something like Mission Impossible, where it is like, hey, you're a secret agent on a mission 100%. doing like these big stunts, that sort of deal. I would love for them to do something like that. I don't know if that I don't know if that's where their heads at, are at. I'm very curious on what um, what they might be thinking for for a new IP, new game, um, but. Yeah, I don't think we'll see Uncharted. Yeah, yeah. I think if they come back to that, it'll be a, a yeah. while more still. And then final question here in the reader mail section goes to Alexis. <laughs> Alexis writes in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games, just like you can, and says Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strike Back, and Last of Us uh, were Alexis's favorite games. Crash 2 is more or less for nostalgia. It's the first game I ever played, being two years old. And the first game I ever beat at four, it took a while. Hmm. Uh, but no other game has resonated with me as much as The Last of Us. And then Alexis's question is this. For Greg, what is the thing that keeps bringing you back to PlayStation? Throughout every generation, why is PlayStation the winner versus other competitors in your eyes? Um, the cheesy answer, I think, obviously, is you guys. The fact that I get to have these kind of conversations. But literally based on the conversations we've had for an hour and 40 yeah. minutes, I think is the point of why I like PlayStation so much and why it exists so well in this ecosystem is that PlayStation makes is the it, PlayStation makes first party exclusive games that are the reason I play video games. Like mm-hmm. last year or you know 2019 I hung my game of the year on uh Fallen Order because that's why I play games. I want a great story, I want cool characters, I want cool abilities, I want cool planets, I want to run and do cool stuff. What I love about PlayStation and the games that resonate with me the most from PlayStation are these story-based narrative adventures, whether it be Uncharted, whether it be Infamous, whether it be Last of Us, right? Like, it is, and this is something that we're, you know, talked about before in a weird way of, like, why they're not bought, but Quantic Dream, right? Why Detroit? Why Heavy Rain? Like, I love getting lost in these worlds, and I love finishing games and having that water cooler discussion about them and what did you see in it and why did you, what did you think? Why, how did you handle this situation? You know, mm-hmm. Horizon, another great example of, like, here is a fucking awesome story mixed with an awesome world to explore and do all these different things. Mm-hmm. Like that's why PlayStation works for me is because they doubled down on that. And it's not, I think part of it of course is that I grew up a Sega kid, so I don't have that attachment to Nintendo from a young age. Um, you know, I didn't get an Xbox original until Knights of the Old Republic way late. I bought Knights of the Old Republic one and two with it and stubs the zombie. Mm-hmm. And then 360, it was always, not that I'm trying to take away from them, but the big shooter games of like Halo and mm-hmm. Gears and Space has never really done it for me. I, I'm just a Star Wars fan, I think, last year. Like, yeah. That's just talking to the caliber and libraries these games have or uh, these companies have in terms of the games, whereas PlayStation has spoken to me and I've been able to go along for that ride with them mm-hmm. of buying, you know, my PS2 on launch night in Meyer, waiting nine hours in line to buy it. And then bringing it home and never stopping, and them having Metal Gear and them having all these things that yeah yeah fuck yeah that's why Dude, I want to play the games. PS2 library so good it's probably my favorite console library but though maybe PS4 might might um, overtake that but yeah I'm I'm with you with everything you said I'm like I'm on I'm on kind of the opposite side of the coin also where I am 
I'm mean, I'm a PlayStation fanboy. I'm also a Nintendo fanboy, and so I I play both sides with that. Sorry, Xbox, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for all the reasons you just said, right? Like the the types of games. It's I mean for me it is like a similar thing with Nintendo, right? Where Nintendo puts out a certain type of game, right? You have your Mario's, you have your Zelda's, you have your Splatoon's, you have all those games, and all those games are dope, and they have their own they have their own style, and I think they go for it and they do it with quality. I think PlayStation does the same thing, but they do it with like their big like. Right now, at least, they're big single-player narratives, right? What it was on PS3 was, like, their, um, some of those, but also, you know, you had, they had their quirky games. They had the, their little big planets. Yep. Um, you had... They got weird. They got weird, yeah. Um, you know, PS2, some of my favorite games, two of my favorite games are Shadow Colossus and Metal Gear Solid 3, um, and Metal Gear Solid 2. Like, you know, they... they throughout the last four, like, uh, home consoles they put out, uh, you've seen them sustain a level of quality that... Uh, has been just like really cool to see and has really like vibed with like not only us but like a lot of people like the wide audience yeah 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 and that's the you know part of it of like having been a primary PlayStation Two player getting hired at IGN you know right after the launch of PS Three starting beyond when I didn't own a PlayStation Three and I would literally be on the show being like I don't know why anybody would buy this thing and like to grow with that community right to grow with that audience to grow with these developers and these libraries and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Which leads us to the next segment on PS I Love You XOXO. It's called PlayStation's Greatest Hits. This is an idea Blessing came up with. Blessing, what are we going to do? So for 10 episodes, since this is the end of the decade, mm-hmm. what we're going to do for 10 episodes, well, I don't know about straight, but for 10 episodes, uh, <laughs> we are going to start at the beginning of the decade, and we're going to talk about our PlayStation game of the year for each year starting with 2010. Hell yeah. Up until 2019. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, I, we have it listed here, of course, but I want to mm-hmm. talk about the competition before we even get into it, right? Yes. If you're talking about 2010 games, right? Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, Fallout New Vegas, God of War 3, Red Dead Redemption, Heavy Rain 2, Mod Nation Racers. Yeah, I put it on there. Dead Nation. Yeah, <laughs> I put it on there. Persona 3 Portable. I'm getting into PSP shit because I'm a nerd. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, Valkyria Chronicles 2, God of War, Ghost of Sparta. Mm. Blessing at Oye Jr. What is your pick for the 2010 Game of the year so for PlayStation. My PlayStation game of the year for 2010. I feel like it might be a contentious one, but y'all might get it. Uh, Heavy Rain from Quantic Dream. Get up there. That's what I'm talking about. You know I, what I mean? love Heavy Rain when Fuck it came yeah. out. Fuck yeah, we all did. Yeah, this is you were yelling at Imran about this yes. right on Twitter because Imran was like, we didn't like that. I think right. I was yelling at Bear about this. Was it? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, because I was. Oh, because you were the one saying yeah, we didn't. It was kind of funny. Like, did we? Yeah, it was kind of funny. Games Daily. Bear uh, was. It was you were having a conversation with Emron. Yeah. Bear was in the background saying, because uh, like I think you were saying that like we loved it at the time, and Bear was in the background saying, did we? No, did we? We didn't yeah, love yeah, it at okay. the time. We loved it at the time. We Barrett. did, Barrett. I remember it was revolutionary. Yeah, Barrett. I remember everybody being like, "Yo, you see, like, you know, he lost Jason or whatever the kid, Sean Jason. or whatever it was." Um, no, Jason was the first one. Sean was the second one. Dang, I, this, 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 Ethan this Mars can't hang on to kids. <laughs> um, but I, Heavy Rain to me was dope. Um, not only story wise, because I, I like the story fine, and I like I I'm really into mysteries. The origami killer. The origami killer was a great mystery. Next, um, Imran rightly you know, pointed out some plot holes. Oh yeah. Um, which you know, looking back, hindsight's twenty twenty. Like okay, yeah, like <laughs> these are some issues. But I think. For me, when I think of Heavy Rain, Heavy Rain, I very much put myself back into the time in which I played it, um, which where uh, the way in which they went about, you know, the adventure game felt new and fresh. Because I, I want to say, yeah, that was before like Walking Dead and stuff. Oh yeah, um, that was like a big like adventure game, um, big cinematic adventure game, right? And so like in just from the ways in which like they framed shots in the game uh the graphics of the game the ways in which like the playstation icons would appear uh when you're trying to make a decision and they made them like you know shake if you got a tap all that stuff like the the small details uh that made that game stylistically feel like its own i really appreciated that's and i think that you can't understate that Mm -hmm. like that the fact that this wasn't like other things there had been indigo prophecy don't get me wrong but i mean this was hey here is a major game that PlayStation is behind, that they are pushing as, ba- I mean, as a first party game, it was exclusive, mm-hmm. not that they own Quantic Dream, but pushing that, hey, here's something that is awesome. And I remember playing that and it was just like, 
what the fuck? Like, yeah. you could go any, people can die and you can do this. And like, what, how's the story going to branch? Like, we take that all for granted now. Cause like you said, right? Mm -hmm. On top of Detroit, yeah. on top of. Like, uh, we've gotten Until Dawn. Right. right? Exactly. You know, we've gotten like better like versions of what that was. So many people have iterated that, including Telltale, which I do. Yes. You know, I think you look at what Telltale was yeah. before Walking Dead, where it was like, how do I use this tea bag to turn off the lights? Like, that was the kind of adventure game crap you were doing in there. Mm -hmm. Like, this was very much like, yeah. we're going to tell you a story, and you're going to get pulled through it and you're, through your own choices. Yeah, and I very much, like, acknowledge that, like, you know, the game hasn't necessarily aged the best, but I think, you know, it for what it was doing at the time, I think, was really cool and seemed very different. Um, and, yeah, like, nowadays we get things like Life is Strange, which is yep. doing it better. But um, for 2010, I'm going to say Heavy Rain. Okay. I'll tell you what, as I was looking through the list, mm -hmm. you almost had me on your side. I yeah. think I wrote Heavy Rain at one point, and I was like, wait, what else? And I went, and I'm like, Metal Gear Solid, Peach oh, Walker. Yeah. Come on. My ah. favorite game of all time until God of War came around. What a fucking game this was. Are you talking to me about like, Again, in the same way where, you know, uh, man, this is what an interesting way to do you take advantage of it and do something we hadn't seen before at that time. Like, it took what monster hunter was in japan and brought it here to america to a very nerdy sect of us mm -hmm. and put it in the same way of like i remember having my psp with me and i played through the story at the review event right i beat at the review event and then kept grinding out missions and it would be mm -hmm. that i'd be on the train to ign from my house and i would uh, do the thing where you go into recruit soldiers you ping random wi-fi hotspots and it would you know create a character that you would play and then be able to put them in your mother base and do all this different stuff mm -hmm. it was the first time ever that with a PSP, a portable thing, it was at the end of work. I remember me and Mike and Caleb from IGN would literally be like, all right, cool, let's go to the bar. And we'd go to the bar and we would play Peace Walker there. Hmm. We would get beers and sit there and just play Peace Walker and grind out what everything we were doing. It was so fucking awesome. That sounds awesome for a Metal Gear Solid game. Right? Yeah. And that was the thing of like, it was so cool to have these missions that were replayable. The, go do these different things, different challenges, different equipment. When they'd get stuck somewhere and I, you know, I was like 90 hours into the game, I'd come back and be able to help them because I had X, Y, and Z unlocked. Mm -hmm. Like, that was so incredible, let alone, I think, that it was an amazing story. I still think it was one of the most approach. It probably, I would say, probably is the most approachable Metal Gear story where I know what you talk mm -hmm. about. It, like, you can get bogged down in the minutiae and be lost in it. This yeah. was so simple of, you're this guy. You were this hero. Now you're out on your own. And guess what? Somebody shows up with a tape recorder, and it sounds like your mentor who you know you killed. Yeah. That is enough to pull you back into this world and go back in and figure out what's going on. Yeah. I'm so sad I missed this game at the time because I didn't have a PSP. Yeah. Um, and so, like, for me as a Metal Gear Solid fan, I, I, would, I would even say I like the big boss games more than the Solid Snake games. Well, there's been so many more now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I'm really sad that I missed this at, at the time, and I'm excited to possibly play it no not okay. possibly. possibly you said you're doing it. oh we're doing right, it's it doing okay it. this is happening Dope. right kev we're making it happen yeah i'm prepping the ps3s okay <laughs> thank you very much kevin now we could play him on vita uh, okay can we uh, then we're doing on psp it's fine okay. it's fine i'm not gonna i'm not gonna get, i'm not gonna get greedy here i'm just saying uh, that if you like that idea where we're playing him at the bar put it out hmm. take the ps3s sounds good to me kevin you <laughs> nailed it yeah so i'm picking my 2010 game metal gear solid peace walker nice we will continue to build this list as we go. Now, one of the final segments of the day. I assure you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's called PSN Profile of the Week. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, back on Podcast Beyond on PS I Love You XOXO, we had a whole thing where you sent in your name. We would send best friends to find you and play games with you. That is an ongoing part of Kind of Funny Games Daily, where we do it five times a week. No sense doing that dragging that back up here that's something that's living over there mm -hmm. instead psn profile of the week is something different it's where you will go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games you will submit your questions your comments your concerns and your psn name if you want to have us dig through it see what we think about it call out some red flags about it today we're going to do two myself and blessing oh no i'll start with blessing oh no <laughs> who's bad psn oh, name no who's bad psn listen name? Is I, Merc City sixty four? So I got M E R K. I City was in high 64. school. Sixty four. I was in high school, and you used to have an excuse. You used to have an excuse well, for it. Well, here's the thing. Now you can change it. I plan to change it, and here's the thing. I I was scared at first to change it mm -hmm. because of all the reported like, oh, it's breaking my my trophies. Oh, the game doesn't boot up if you change your PSN name. I've not heard anybody say that. Since they launched, because nobody's like, going back and playing PS3 games except for us tonight. Yeah. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? But even like, I think the press release was like anything before like 2017. And so I was just like, 
no, I'm not. I'm gonna stay away from this. But since I've not heard anybody really talk about it breaking any other, any of their games, I I plan to do it. I just don't know what I'm gonna change it to. Is there a Blessing Junior? Yes, on it? Oh. there is. That's why I haven't changed it to Blessing Junior. And so since that's taken, I need to figure out some other one. And so anything if, else? Anything else? <laughs> Thank because, you. Because like. If anybody has Merc any suggestions, Merc City sixty four. Because like Merc in high school, it was like a saying, right? It was like, oh, Merc City, like you know, it's just like you killed it, man. You Merc City. Was it? I never. Like heard if you play, if you play basketball, or let's get a three. Suplex City. Merc- yeah, Suplex City was a bro- is a Brock yeah, Lesnar thing. thing. That's still very popular. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then sixty four for the N sixty four, my first console. Yeah, D N sixty four. If you have any suggestions, I don't know if that could be. a I think you should also probably change your bio. What's my bio? Oh, I know my bio. On the Richter scale, I'm, I'm Nathan Drake, Uncharted. <laughs> it's from a rap song. It might that might be Mega Ran that said that. Maybe, probably not actually. But it's Mega. I take it back, and he's cool. <laughs> All right, let's see. I don't know what's happening over there. Uh, currently, Merc City sixty four is a level sixteen on the PSN right now. Two hundred. I'm sorry, two thousand six hundred and twenty trophies, six platinum <laughs> trophies, yeah. one hundred and eleven gold, four hundred and three silver, twenty one hundred bronze. I was concerned, I want you to know. Because, mm-hmm. of course, all this information being pulled from our friends over at psnprofiles.com, a, ser- a service you should use, you can su- subscribe to, you can sign up for. When I went there early to pull your information, mm-hmm. I, I don't think many people are looking for Merc City 64. Mm-hmm. So I went in there and I was like, this says he hasn't earned a trophy since October. The last <laughs> trophy was October in uh, Uncharted. And then I pinged it to refresh you. You've been refreshed. Okay. I see. I was your, gonna say because that is. False. You got some Horizon Zero Dawn work on here. Mm-hmm. Dishonored, you put in and quit before we're getting I one did. trophy. <laughs> I did. Dishonored, zero of thirty-one <laughs> trophies. I played that literally earlier this week, and I was just like, ah, I'm not in. The, I'm not in the mood. You're on the move with Death Stranding, twenty-six to sixty-three. Mm-hmm. Seventeen of forty on Jedi. That's good. You got Concrete Genie installed. That's installed, all I can yes. ask for right now. Yeah. You'll get back to it. You'll get back to it. Um, let's see. You're for your six plats. It goes Rock uh, Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Rocket League. Yes. People for years have told me Rocket League's one I should go for. It's easy. Yeah? Yeah. But it's like time consuming, right? I gotta play a lot of games. Like I accidentally did it. Yeah? It's more it was, Yeah. Like, I just played so many games where I finally hit that like uh drive ten kilometers or something like that. But did you play a lot of Rocket League? Because it might it might oh, be dude, time consuming. Because yeah. I played a lot of Rocket League. Yeah. I, I played so- on and off regularly for like a good two and a half years and it was mm-hmm. when they did the hockey update where i was playing like mm, yeah every that was day a great that one i was not that working. was a great one yeah yeah and it was during the hockey uh um kind of event that i cracked that final uh trophy mm-hmm. yeah during the summer the it's radical summer i got on there and got the mm-hmm. ecto one downloaded that but then mm-hmm. i played more on switch because we we're on the go so much and then i've never gone i was like oh, I'm gonna play. it probably is time consuming yeah Judging from how much I played Rocket League, but it is definitely super easy because I I got it very naturally. Okay. Yeah. Up next was Undertale. Yeah, that's that's also an easy one. Yeah, super easy one. I know I'm gonna get drug through the streets. I don't the, like Undertale. One of the greatest games tried, of all time. Man. I've tried, dude. I it's just incredible. Can't, I just can't do it. I just don't man, like it. It's an easy platinum, and so even even so, I feel like. But for every one Undertale like platinum, through. I get I get like 15 Foxy's Revenge or whatever. The fuck Undertale's it is. only like. Five hours long. Yeah, trust me, it's not that long to play <laughs> Foxy Land or whatever. Uh, Tales from the Borderlands, obviously. Yeah, easy one. Easy one. Yeah, yeah, good game though. Oh, this is my favorite Telltale game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor. That was my first one. That was my yeah. first platinum. That what, was f- what was what urged you to go get that one? It was one. Of, it was one of those things where I played it, finished it, and I was just like, I want to play more of this game, right? Because like the thing about Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor is the story wasn't the thing that was like driving me through the <laughs> through the game. Like I couldn't care less about the Middle Earth story. It was the gameplay, and it was like, dude, that Nemesis system. It's a so bummer good. that they never brought it back. Yeah. Um, well, they did in Shadow Shadow of War, but yeah. like nobody else has ever tried it. You hope for whatever WB Montreal's Batman game. Oh my god, dude, the the Nemesis system is so good. Um, and yeah, once I beat it, I was just like, I looked at the trophy list because I realized that I wanted to play more of this game. I wanted a reason to play more of it. Looked at the trophies, and I was like, I can do all of this, and yeah. I did it. And that's yeah. the one, dude. That's what I think is a good trophy list where yes. you look at it, you're like, cool. I can do this. I'm excited to do this. Yeah. It's not like, oh fuck, I gotta yeah. do this. That's the same with me and Spider Man. Like yeah. that, that's how it happened there too. Like I like I I like platinums for you know moments like that. I'm not like a platinum hunter by any means. Sure. I mean I only have we'll six. Get you. We'll but get you. um, you know, I my goal, my personal goal is one platinum a year, which I failed last year. <laughs> but before last year I was hitting it. 
Sure. Um, but turn over New Leaf, get two this year. You know what I mean? I mean, it, Make it I think that might be the plan. Yeah, for new uh, for gaming resolutions, right? I'm up next, obviously, because we're mm-hmm. trying to give you an idea what the segment is. Uh, I so for me, game over Greggy, psnprofiles.com slash game over Greggy. I have nine thousand four hundred ninety one trophies, uh, one hundred eighteen platinums, uh, nine hundred seventy six gold, one thousand eight hundred ninety silver, six thousand five hundred seven bronze. I think my gaming resolution here, because if you remember last year leaving Gamescast Mm -hmm. or starting Gamescast, I said I wanted to get 100 Platinums uh, because I wasn't at 100 Platinums last Mm -hmm. year. Now I'm at 118 because I just, I fucking, I'm such a whore. You know what I mean? I'll do whatever. How how much money do you want for a cheap Platinum? I'll take it. Uh, My plan uh, I want to do this year is get 10,000 trophies. So that puts me about... What's oh well, wait? You're at what? Five hundred. You have six thousand right now, right? No, no. Right now, that's my bronze level. Oh, uh, I'm at, okay. I'm at I'm at basically ninety five hundred. So I'm like five hundred oh. trophies away. Okay. So yeah. And yeah. as much as I just take over cheap ass platinums, I'll be fine. I'll make that mm. up. And you know what I mean? And then I'll do another. We'll do another ten thousand trophy stream or whatever. Have you looked through it? Do you have things you want to call me out on, or is it just the fact that I will play anything? For it's trophies? the fact that you will play okay. anything for a trophy is the thing that <clears throat> that disturbs me. Yeah. Gross, really. Um, yeah. you've barely started a pl- uh, a Plague Tale Innocence. Yeah, that is one of my. Uh, I have that actually down here under my troubling section. Your troubling section didn't count because it got a f- refreshed. Okay. My troubling section, yeah, is that I have a plague tale and after party at one percent. Oh. Where a plague tale, I started uh, what the day before, maybe Christmas Eve, maybe uh, New Year's Eve, whatever. And I started it up. I was playing it. I was interested. I was like, oof, is this mm. whole game escort missions? I'm not about that world. And then people started showing up to hang out, and I was like. This is no longer a game I can play. Like, it's a story game, right? Like, mm-hmm. I can't play it and not listen to it. So I stopped it, and then I was like, I'll get back to it, and I haven't turned it back on. Dude, you got the Platinum for DC Universe Online in one month and one week. Now. <laughs> That's awesome. It's not true. <laughs> no? Oh, So okay. if you remember what the thing with DC Universe Online, the Platinums was, is that I got it in PS3, and uh, that took me forever. That okay. took me, like, well over a year because I put it down for so long and then came back at a Christmas break. Mm-hmm. And then when it came to PlayStation 4, you could just turn on your PlayStation 4 and you got them. It went gotcha. ding, 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 okay. gave it to you. So I don't know where I saw that earlier today, too, where I'm like, I don't know what that stat comes from. Mm-hmm. It's got to be something that's not jiving out there. Gotcha. The, one, the other one I put under the troubling section for myself, right, was Days Gone, where Days Gone, obviously, I, you know, I infamously, when we were leading up to it, I was like, mm-hmm. I am all about this game. <laughs> this game's going to be dope. And then I got it and I was like, ugh, I did not enjoy this game. Uh-huh. But. I'm 45% through the trophies, which doesn't look that good, Mm -hmm. but all the trophies are like, finish this quest line, finish this quest line, (laughs) and I know that I'm so close on all of them that I I do kick around reinstalling Days Gone, first off, to see what's happened since all the patches have happened, Mm -hmm. but then also, do I want to go out and knock out those final 55% of trophies? Hmm. Can't psych myself up to do it, Yeah, but I think about it. That that's disgusting. Maybe it's just an maybe it's just an experiment. (laughs) Maybe maybe you know things have changed for us. That's disturbing. How motivated are you to get that Beat Saber Platinum? Dude, here you want to know what killed the Beat Saber Platinum? What was it? Oculus Quest. Oh. Oculus Quest is such a better experience that it's like... I feel that. Yeah. Anytime I play Beat Saber, because Alex Van Aken, my friend, uh, owns... Uh, I don't think it's Oculus Quest. It's some Oculus mm-hmm. device. Um, Go. I, Rift. I forget. One of them. Um, and I played it on his, and he has like the downloaded songs or whatever, yeah, yeah. and it's great. Like yeah. playing like some like Drake songs on sure. in Beat Saber, super fun. Can you see they're patching that in for Quest? We're gonna be able to play the download, the made up, the like user generated uh, st- songs for Beat Saber, including uh, toss a coin to your Witcher. Come on, what are we talking about? Man. <laughs> All right, um, that's one that I. I would like to get and beat Saber, but that game that game gets difficult. Well, sure, yeah, I know. Yeah. It's like do uh, do it on expert. That was yeah. the thing was when I started the Beat Saber exercise program. I guess two years ago now, but like pretty much a year ago, mm-hmm. and I was doing it every morning. I was like looking at the trophies. I'm like, even the crazy one of doing it for however many hours or length yeah. of time. Where I'm like, I'm gonna get that over time. And then I fell off, and then Quest came, and Quest is just mm. so revolutionary. Of like, I don't have to move the coffee table because I just move into the other room where there's just mm-hmm. empty space and trace my outline and play there. Mm-hmm. And it's better, better hand tracking because that was the other thing with PlayStation VR. My uh, left hand would always start vibrating off eventually. And I'm like, I move the camera, yeah. I do all this stuff, it doesn't work. Yeah, mine did that too. Yeah, yeah. And also that wire got in the way. Like the totally. Cable. Oh my god, it's the worst. If PlayStation VR two isn't wireless, we're gonna have some problems here. Yeah, you know what I mean? Get it together, guys. I know they're trying their best. I'm not saying they're trying their best. I'm just saying to get better. Ladies and gentlemen, do you want to see us dig through your trophies, ask you questions you can't respond to? Probably make funny a little bit. Write in patreon.com slash kind of funny games. You can give us your PSN profile there. Final segment of the show before 
We do the post show over on patreon.com slash kind of funny games is a simple one. Days without Pat upon two. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been 758 days since a human being played Pat upon two on the PlayStation 4 at PSX 2017. We have this final fucking fantasy demo everybody's talking about. Nobody cares about it. Where's Pat upon two? Uh, here's my hope, Barrett. I hope this is the one thing that's out of date in this fucking show. I hope we wake up tomorrow morning and guess what? Fucking Final Fantasy demo is out. You're all excited about that. Pat upon two's there. Where the fuck is Pat upon two for the PS4? What happened? You know what I mean? You saw it. We all saw it over the over the break. Uh, hey, guess what, guys? There's box art for Pat upon two on PS4, and there's box art for a Final Fantasy seven demo. Seven hundred and fifty eight fucking days, guys. Shuhei, Herman, Scott. I feel like we're gonna get Final Fantasy seven remake, Last of Us two, Cyberpunk. Doom Eternal. We're getting all these great Animal Crossing. All these games are coming out this year. <laughs> and we have a segment that's about Patapon 2 coming out. And all of those games are come are going to come out before Patapon 2. Fuck you. 2. Don't say it. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that to me. Don't take away my hope. 758 days, guys. I'll keep counting for you because that's what we do here. This is PSI Love You XOXO. Each and every Tuesday, available on all sorts of platforms, we come to you with the PlayStation topics and news-ish. And not like the news news. I think we did a good job of like, here's yeah. what's going on, what's the conversation Big about topic, it. kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to have fun. We want to be critical. We want to have some conversations. If you want to be part of that, go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. Give us your questions, comments, concerns, your PSN profiles, and everything under the shoe hey sun. Then come watch it Tuesday. You can listen to it on podcast services. Remember, if you go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games, you get it ad free and with the post show we're about to do now. Blessing. Yes. This has been a lovely two hours. It has been. Thank you for coming to work here and making the show happen again. Thank you for having me here. Anytime. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, it's been our pleasure to serve you.